hoping my angles are good. Okay, come on. Adam, we do jazz hands here like this. You're going to have to do it. Let's do just it. see that. Come on, jazz hands. There we go. Jazz hands going. Walter's doing jazz <laughs> hands. All right. We are live. We are live, guys. Welcome back to the This is the Who Move My Freedom podcast coming to you live on the Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded channel. I'm Hank Strange. I hope you got your big girl panties on. This is episode 329, and we're calling it Who's Afraid of Bernie Sanders in 2020? That's what we wanted to call it. Technically, it's not named that because I try to call it that, and then YouTube would not let me do it. They would not let me go live with that. So I took out Sanders and just left Bernie in 2020. They wouldn't allow that. So I had to take Bernie all the way out. So this shows you the lockdown that uh, the it's, left. Oh, wait, no, that ain't lockdown. It's called the uh, censorship. Yeah, yeah. 1984, Big Brother is watching, not allowing us to say Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Hashtag Bernie yeah. Sanders is a communist. Socialist. Hashtag Bernie Sanders is an old. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. We also have our special guest is Adam Litke. There he goes of Hollow Sun and competitive shooting fame. And he also, you know, he's also he wrote down here. I'm supposed to say he's a very handsome man. There Thank you. I mean, I, I paid you a hundred bucks. <laughs> I expect. <it>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Adam? Not much, man. How about you? Good. Good. You know, uh, we have like been meaning to talk to each other for a while like i saw you at shot show and we try to talk but it was always stuff going on it was always crazy stuff going on with you or me so i'm glad that we actually did get a chance to talk for a little while we're just gonna have to do it live though <laughs> right i mean well you said socialism so i was on board right i mean that's, we're yeah. socialism on this podcast right <laughs> uh what <laughs> <laughs> Wrong memo. <laughs> yeah, nobody's pro socialist here. <laughs> is that is that you're trying to troll the people out there, right? Trying to get them just a tiny bit, just a little bit, little bit. Uh, and, and we do have Walter. There he goes, Walter Keller. Say here I am. Here I am again. Yes. So Adam, if you've never met Walter, Walter Adam, um, Walter Adam makes. Wait, hold on a second. Adam Walter makes <laughs> a, uh, a a fifty cal that goes on an AR fifteen lower. Um, don't ask him about that because the powers that be. Yeah, we're we're in ATF limbo right now. So um, yeah, they said well, I feel that like it, I got I gotta like wield something around with NFA because Walter's oh, like, look at my MP5. That is <laughs> got your oh, Star Wars gun. Awesome. Uh oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Gorn is starting early, early people. Early, right. <laughs> yeah. Don't just tease us with that thing. Okay, let's see what Walter has here. Yeah, Walter also makes these stocks, the KES compact entry stocks. For your favorite uh, submachine type guns and braces, braces. Yeah. And we have the uh, Liberty Suppressors. Uh, which one is this again? God, I'm terrible. Sorry about that. Centurion nine millimeter. Boom. Yes. Boom. Awesome. Let's see this gun that Adam was teasing us with. Where is it? All right. Uh, is that a two? No, is that an X95 or a two? Yeah, X95. 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 Uh, Victor's yeah. legacy out here. Sarah code up for me. Got Holy the, moly, I've never seen an X. My X95 doesn't look like that. Oh, yeah, we're all Star Wars up, and uh, we're running a suppressor. You know, we're doing NFA like Walter. Not uh, not to his extent, but a little bit here. Yeah, what can do you have on there? Uh, so that is the Saker K. Uh, one, it was my, I think it was my first can I ever bought was this one. Uh, okay. Does a good job on her. A little gassy, but does a good job. Okay, very nice, very nice. I'm a little gassy you. sometimes, too, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we still love you. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Who is it? No, that's a very cool – that's probably the most uh, decorated X95 I've ever seen. Do you yeah, they, use that uh, when you compete? I do. They get a little crazy, too. Holy the, uh, look at that one. We're just starting the gun the gun port early, but, uh, yeah, we got wow. – uh, that's, the, that's the 300 blackout, and they did it in 300 theme. Uh, oh, no. And this is the uh, Silencer Co. Uh, this is the this is the Octane Forty Five. Holy smokes! Uh, home defense nice. gun here. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, nice three hundred cool. blackout. Yeah, a little pew pew. Yeah. <laughs> so that the first one was kind of like Star Star Wars, right? Is this also Star yeah. Wars? Or? Uh, that one's uh, the three hundred. The uh, based on the movie, the three hundred, because they figured three hundred blackout might as well put three hundred into it. Um, okay. We do have other Star Wars stuff. Uh, we have the uh, the nine millimeter. It's got the uh, the first order crest on it. How many of these uh, guns do you have, Adam? 
Oh, uh, I mean, I just, I just keep taking them out of. I mean, we just, you know, I oh, figure man. this is a set. Adam set us up. He was like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just, gonna, gonna, I'm just gonna have these guns down here, and I'm just gonna pull this one up, right. pull this one up. Uh, That's right. Now I feel kind of like I was gonna show <laughs> arms Black Widow, but uh, I'll just, put, I'll just put it down over here. <laughs> So I thought you said we're doing freedom stuff, so I came first to do freedom stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought yeah. some stuff in. Um, and so, okay, so you shoot competitively, but you yeah. work for Hollow Sun. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do some stuff with Hollow Sun, one of their pro staff. Uh, I get to travel around, do shot show, NRA show. Uh, we'll be doing a uh, girl and a gun here in uh, I think it's April 13th and 14th, or 12, 13, 14th down in Texas. Um, IWI. I go out and I, we train their rep groups before and some other stuff um it's it's a it's a great thing my day job's a finance director but uh you know off the books i'm a tactical accountant <laughs> oh okay so you're so for hollow sun you're the finance director no i'm just a finance director in general for hollow oh. sun, i'm just a, I'm a pro staff oh okay cool all right yeah so you got a lot of got a lot of jobs there a lot of gigs yeah <laughs> oh well yeah you know you got young kids so i guess the bills right. must Gotta be paid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, YNH says you've been watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> so no, cool, man. I'm I'm glad you came in. Glad you got some cool guns there, Walter. You're gonna have to get out the heavy. I don't know. That's a hard uh, hard act to follow there. Yeah. Don't let Adam take. <laughs> I mean, I could like do that. it, but it's it's gonna take a little yeah. bit of work. You know. Yeah. Don't, I don't have you know. any Star Wars guns, so I'm yeah, already heavy out. Artillery, though. Walter. Machine guns. Those <laughs> machine guns. <laughs> you know, on the table. All right, so here, before we get deep into this here, I wanna shout out everyone that's in the chat. Um, you know, thanks to you guys for joining us. Please guys, uh, hit the thumbs ups right now, share this video, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, ring the bell. That's very, very important. That's how you get notified that we're doing all these cool uh, podcasts and everything. Shout out to everyone who's listening to us on audio. We've got people all over the world in three, four different countries <laughs> all around the globe <laughs> listening to us. So, um, you know, we appreciate that. Shout out to everyone out so there. So you don't believe in a flat earth? Is that what you're saying? Flat earth. Hmm. <laughs> you said uh, globe. We could, so. do, we could do, yeah, we could do a poll. <laughs> we could do a poll to see who believes uh, in the flat earth. Like a Frisbee. Yeah, yeah. I figure it goes wrong with socialism. I mean, they kind of intermix. They're both yeah. such I'm pretty sure Bernie, things. <laughs> yeah, Bernie, I absolutely believe that he believes in that. No. Yeah. Well, who knows? Who knows what he believes in? <laughs> um, Vanessa Kitty wants to know if Hollow Sun makes a holographic sight. Uh, no, they're all laser etched reticles, uh, so they're not a true holographic, and that's why they're so crisp. Uh, you're not going to see the washout with ours because they're not they're not actual holographic. Okay, very cool. Flopping Garbage says uh, shout out. So shout out to Flopping Garbage. Anyone <laughs> else out there that wants a shout out, let me know. Um, Jake Delahome says, I feel emasculated. Yeah, you know, because Adam <laughs> just kept pulling out. And Bullpups, man. Do I even have a Bullpup here in the studio? Nope, I don't. Damn. I mean, we can go so. AK with the Galil. <laughs> oh, oh, Adam. Is like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are all your guns painted, Adam? Seriously. No. Uh, all except for, well, there's one up here that's not painted. It's just a regular AK. <laughs> oh, okay. See, Adam is one of the ways, but Adam's been waiting for this show. <laughs> oh, I love this. I get to break it out and be like, let's talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this is cool. Okay, this is going to be a great show. we got a bunch of stuff that we're going to get to here. Lots of things to talk about. Hey, would you blow me? He needs a shout out. So shout out to Hey, would you blow me? Hey, would you blow me? Yeah. So shout Walter, you need to take some of these shout outs also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike Bryan says, are you for real? I'm buying a hollow sun now. Um, I thought they were holographic or projected LED. Yeah, projected LED. Later, yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it is projected LED, but not holographic. Correct, yeah, we could, we might be able to, uh, maybe I'll we'll get a discount code for you guys for the next month or something like that. Oh, uh oh. Very cool. We'll, we're, not yeah, no. if, we're not gonna say no. We're not gonna say no. Right. Let me see if uh, I can get something going, and we can do that. I'm supposed to get something going with Lewis. We'll see what happens with that. So I don't know. I'm gonna yeah. text him. Like, you better listen up, buddy. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, sending, I'm, I'm gonna send him a stock all set up. So I said, you know, I, I don't have any house on product. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah. The Walter making his own side deals. 
Well, you got to. He's a hustler. <laughs> He's a hustler. I don't, you know, come on. We're talking about Walter here. He hustles every day, <laughs> every day. So, uh, and then Ronald Hotboy says, I love your guns. No homo. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and Swap 900 says, DNC will burn the burn once again. So, sh okay, should we just jump into this and talk about Bernie, Bernie Sanders? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. He announced that he is running for El Presidente. He's in the running. In the 2020. Um, and it looks like he hires top progressive advocate Faiz Shakir as his campaign manager. What was that, so Nick? Faiz Shakir? Faiz Shakir. Yeah. Interesting. I names mean things, too, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. You have to research that one. When you um, hear people's names and they sound a little... Oh, well, anyways. yeah. Is anyone surprised that Bernie Sanders is going to make a 2020 run? Um, no, not really. But that see now, now so there's a difference between then and now. Now you got a you got a whole bunch of socialists out there. Then he was only the socialist. The the so, uh, the Bernie of the of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so, I and mean, you yeah. you got AOC out there, man. She's she's garnering up votes left and right, and she's a huge supporter of his. So mm -hmm. he's he's definitely getting people interested in talking to him, even though it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, what what chances do you guys think he's going to be here in the end? I mean, I think nope. last time around he it came down to the wire between him and Hillary. Do you think uh, that's going to happen again, or you think Sanders is going to get pushed out early? I mean, they, they've got a huge pool right now. I mean, they've got people in there from all over. It was like the Republican thing, I guess, last time. But I don't know. I mean, he's getting a lot of stuff. You talk to younger people, and they really they really resonate with him. So I'm I'm curious, but. I don't yeah. know. I mean, you, you have uh, that uh, Camille Harris, I think is her name, or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. She's getting a ton of popularity, too. I mean, you know, she yeah, wanted to yeah, talk but... about you know, smoking weed and stuff, and that bumped her up crazy points, I guess. So that shows how, that just shows how, um, oh, let's see here, uh, how, uh, what is the proper terminology? How, how, uh, how, uh, uh, um, the, the brain, the thought process of the people who support these people is so minimal. That worrying about about weed is gonna make you be you're my man. It's like or you're my right. chick, or whatever. It's like come on, come on. Yeah. Well, isn't it? It's also very. Um, it's interesting that younger people are all about Bernie, uh, and the younger people guy. tend to the be socialists. Socialist. Well, yeah. also, but also young people tend to be socialists, right? Well, because they don't pay for anything. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's so. all. It's all this euphemistic kind of oh. You know, ponies and rainbows and all this stuff until until you go to Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you see where they just uh, um, the guy used to be the uh, uh, the finance minister in Venezuela just is a he's in jail now, arrested for money laundering and. Oh really? I'm not oh, surprised. Yeah. Oh yeah, surprised. billions, billions of dollars, not just yeah. millions, but billions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have you have Winston Churchill, I believe, was saying that back in the day, he said if you're not a Democrat when you're young, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative when you're older, you have no brain. <laughs> there you go. So, there you go. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting. You never know what people are going to vote for, and uh, I mean, nowadays you just see people that they believe anything they read. So, you know, if they say somebody's evil, they believe that somebody's evil. So it's yeah. very interesting to see how it's going to impact the elections. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in seeing. Uh, Rondell Stewart says not with Warren and Harris. It will be close. <laughs> oh, we'll right. see. We'll see how that goes. I think Bernie is going to have some pulling power here. Richard Hughes says you get the government you deserve. I guess. Uh, so I don't know, man. I deserve no government. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, how long do you think it is before Hillary jumps in? You think Hillary's going to announce at some point? I don't know. You know, I, I hope they all What's go the, at it, man. It's going to be like they're just going to eat each other alive, which is cool. I like that. They'll, I, I think, they'll eat, go ahead, go ahead, Adam. I, I think it's a strange one with because you have Camille Harris already in there, and you have Bernie. I'm not sure Hillary has so much of a platform at that point. Because I think Harris is going to take most of what what Hillary tried to be, and Bernie takes the rest. Well, I how mean, does how does she recover from the fact that she sabotaged Bernie's thing before? I mean, that just go away? Is that just forgotten? Yeah, so far. I mean, is it just <laughs> like nobody? Oh, that's that's the past. It's very man. convenient. It's very convenient. Yeah. It's a lot like the uh, Jesse Smollett effect, oh, which yeah. you yeah, see. all these the people. Media always... is about to stop talking about that, but I'm not going to let it die. I'm not going to let it die. Everyone. Needs to remember. He'll be I another one. He'll be another one. Arrested. <laughs> yeah. But yes, it's it's very it's very interesting how um, 
you know, Hillary can get away with a lot of stuff. But look, if you promise her the presidency, she will stay alive. Whatever juice they're giving Ruth Bader Ginsburg, <laughs> she will <laughs> sneak over there and steal that juice. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. You got to pass backwards. Bader's on Clinton's juice. Oh, really? Clinton used it during the whole election yeah. process last time. Remember? The yeah. stump, she she goes yeah. into that whole juice between Clinton and her is just like a 69. She looks like she's about to die yeah. before she gets to her daughter's apartment. And then she comes out and she looks like a, a, a racehorse when she comes out. You know, well, not that's kind of exaggerated, but they probably yeah. shot her up with the same stuff they do with racehorses. So, yeah, it's <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But I think all these people are probably going to get together and gang up on uh on Trump, that's that's what uh, I foresee. Yeah, here. I don't, I don't think yeah. they're they're, they're I think, in, rea in reality they're not that good, at, as 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 the, the Clinton Bernie thing showed. Um, mm -hmm. They don't play that well together either in, in reality. Yeah, well, I think the one the one thing that I always see that hurts the conservative side is that you see a lot of people lean, lean towards libertarianism, especially when it comes to like you know Trump already gave up the bump stocks, which everyone's like, yeah, they're useless, but it's still something we should have the right to have if we want them. Yeah, lots of people are mad about that. Yeah. Right. I see a ton of people who are who went from conservative to libertarian to anarchy, and they're not going back and voting conservative. They're voting for who? Yeah, third party candidate. So I'm curious to see how much how much until we split off so much we have nothing left. Do we um, really you know, think that Trump is conservative? I think a lot of people do. <laughs> okay. He's Verse, more conservative than the other option. I'll say. Versus that. yes. Okay. There you go. You know. Yeah. And, he's probably a liberal conservative. Yeah, and I'm I very yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I, I, we can't go backwards to this, um, oh, uh, very soft-spoken conservative garbage, because it doesn't mm -hmm. win nothing. You're not going to win an election if you're a soft-spoken conservative. Yeah, the Democrats will eat you alive. <laughs> in the in the world of social media, there's going to be no uh, half-stepping. I think there's you got to be, be no half -stepping. you got to be out there and and and, and working it hard and, and and not like Trump did, not take no crap from these leftists. You know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i think i think that this time it's going to be no holds bar the gloves come off everybody's going to be going it's going to be social media up in here all these politicians on the left on the right they're all going to be like freaking uh what's the name of this rapper cardi b they're going to be all cardi beat up cardi b yeah i tell you what that's how that's how you win these days that's how you get popularity and that's how you go further yeah you, you gotta I'll, be I'll on point yeah that's that's what it is i was looking i could not avoid the train wreck i tried i didn't want to look at it but i couldn't avoid the train wreck of cardi b um like looking for the salt for her lobster doing she was doing like a live thing and she was looking for the salt for her lobster and she was talking about the whole jesse smollett thing because she says that she's repeating what other people have said that jesse smollett basically messed up uh um you know black history month with with the craziness that's going on i don't you probably didn't hear that walter because you don't follow cardi b which you probably oh, should I, be i got i got a lot yeah. of things yeah so th that was really funny and i think that you're going to see a lot more of that like everyone's going to jump on social media now because trump is the first president to become president on his old social media now obviously obama back in the days he they did use social media and everything but he wasn't really out there making posts and all that. No, kind of did it on his own, like you know, and, and, guerrilla and, and, style. And speaking of that social media, um, Hillary um, never, ever, ever puts herself in a situation where it's not one hundred percent controlled. Never puts in front of uh, like a, a a bunch of people that they don't know what the questions are going to be asked. That was very uh, because she can't handle it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, so and social media, what? She never did any social media. Yeah. Her her handlers did social media, but right, right, right. I mean, yeah. she's not tweeting or anything like that because she probably can't push the button. Like, I mean, yeah, everyone's saying salt for the lobster. That's not me. I'm not Cardi B. As she she's ghetto ass. I get it. I'm I'm just a little bit ghetto. She's salt full, for the lobsters. This has some other meaning or she's all the, I don't know what that means. Um People saying you're supposed to put the butter, the special lobster sauce or whatever. <coughs> Maybe it's salty butter, Kathleen music lovers saying. Uh, that's not the point, people. That's not the point. <laughs> Don't get distracted here. You know, it's very funny if you can, if there's got to be a snippet of it somewhere, you guys can go look it up. She was talking about that whole thing. I also heard that that um, the Empire show is writing that guy out. 
good. of most of his scene. <laughs> good. Yeah, they were talking about that today on the news that he supposedly he'll be he'll be out. Yeah. Good. So, oh well, everybody thinks he, you know, there's nothing wrong with him, right? You know, I mean, no. just, I think it's good. There's repercussions. It needs to be. Yeah, repercussions. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There needs to be. Rep I don't know how far it's going to go, so I'm not going to say that. You know, it's going to go all the way out there, but. Um, you know, we hopefully there will be. Now, let me see. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to go over. Uh, the New York, actually, in, in regards to him, the New York Times had a good article. And I think I threw that up for you guys. Let me see if I can throw it up for the folks who still. We'll get a little, we'll, we'll do a little Jesse Smollett talk. And then we'll let it go uh, yeah. for tonight. For tonight, let's, just let's a little not, bit. Let's not give him a whole lot of Yeah. It. Um, so the New York Times had this article, which I threw up there. It says, Jesse Smollett and a perfect crime, an object lesson in what happens when people in positions of political and cultural authority indulge their biases by suspending disbelief. Oh, yeah. That was, that was a whole lot of talking. What was? No, uh, you don't understand. Uh, Those words are too big for you, Walter? He, he, oh, wait a minute, hang on. Who, who was, who was the cultural? So him? basically. No, what so what the what the New York Times is saying here, this is what happens when people who have political power and cultural authority, what you know, remember I told and, and he they, did? No, no, no. They're not talking about him. They're talking okay. about the people who supported him in the oh, beginning. And, and, and once again, they do? Really? Uh, so they so I guess Camilla they do. Harris, really? I guess they do for some and, people. And Sparta and Spartacus from New Jersey? They do for the people who are crazy enough to listen to their ass. The guy that's accused of being, you know, a bathroom homosexual. Yeah. Do you um, do yeah. you remember Walter when I explained to you about the culture? Do you remember that? <laughs> do you, remember, you don't remember that. Uh, okay, uh, Adam, no. you're laughing. Do you know what I'm talking about? The culture, yes. I, I, I do. I do though. I mean, I mean, you look at. Uh, I, I work with a lot of younger people. I mean, not that I'm not young, but I work with a lot of them. I shoot with some of them, and uh, you know. You have two different sides, you have the conservative side and the liberal side, but it's very interesting how much faith they put into. I mean, I hear Camille Harris' name, I hear uh, Cory Booker's name. I mean, those two names I hear when they reference like what they think is someone who could lead this country. They mm -hmm. honestly, God, believe, you know, that is the person who, who could lead this place and who could do everything better than everybody else. And I just kind of look at them and go, you, you hear them talk in the Senate or the House forever, and it's like, these are idiots. I mean, they, they can barely be, comp you know, they can barely communicate a fact across. And half the time they just make up the facts, and yet that's who they would vote for for president. And I think yeah. that's where you see. I mean, you look at who you have to vote for now; these two sides. And thirty years ago, it would been incomprehensible that this would even be allowable. You know, mm -hmm. seventy years ago, it would have been like you, know, you get shot on the stage. And yet now it's happening. I mean, we're dealing with someone who's who we have many people who are open, openly socialist, and we're like, yeah, you should run the country; you should be a socialist country. Yeah. So, because no, no. they've never lived in that. So, yeah, no, the one thing I'm going to quote from, from Trump's speech, the one thing that I liked in there, I think I told Walter this before, America will never be a socialist nation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never. It will never be. But here's the thing I was talking about, Adam, and I, and I explained this to Walter one day. I was in the barbershop and these guys were talking about um, a boxing match and who they were supporting in the boxing match. Oh, yes, yes. So I guess there was like one guy who was a black guy who's going to be part of the fisticuffs. And, you know, then there was a white guy that was going to be part of it. And so they were talking about who they were supporting. And this young this young guy in the barbershop says, oh, you know, I'm supporting him for the culture. Talking about the mm -hmm. black guy. And I was like, OK, I'm, you know, I don't understand. What, what does that mean? You're supporting him for the culture. And he was like, oh, you don't know what that means? Supporting someone for the culture. And I was like, hell no. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to explain <laughs> it to me. So basically, he said, well, because he's black, that's the code word, the culture. You know, that's now I'm sure that word can be used amongst different cultures. You know, maybe there's gay culture and and socialist culture and this thing and that thing. So everyone, instead of just coming out right with their with their things and going, yeah, I'm just going to support this guy solely, singularly because he's a black guy. That's kind of the way to hide it to say, oh, I'm just gonna support him for the culture. But that would be just as bad as as someone saying they're gonna support the white guy. Just because he's white. Yeah, you know. And, and then, then you're racist say, then. Yeah, because of like, you know, is this guy in the Ku Klux Klan? What's he talking automatically, about? Automatically you're racist if you say that, right? Yeah, so that's what that means. Like Walter, the reason why I'm getting into this because Walter right. wants to know what does this 
culture thing means in these, here. Well, these these so these uh, so called cultural appoint, cultural uh, authority. appointed cultural um, authoritarian. Like we used to have Jesse Jackson and Al oh, Sharpton and oh. all these people. You know, and they stood up and they, they're, there's a they're the smoke person, right? Uh, uh, yeah. for, you know, and th they fought. They've faded to the, you know. Yeah. Well, side. hopefully people realize that uh, no matter who, who you want or what side you are, no side is ever 100% perfect. And everyone thinks their side's perfect. The reality is they're not. It's a mix of everything that kind of works half the time. Yeah. But uh, it's, you know, once you get in a mindset, sometimes you just can't I, get out of that mindset. I, I don't think the people um, have anointed these people as their cultural representatives. The media has anointed these people as cultural representatives because they, 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 they follow the party line. You know, and, oh yeah, and they play that. They play that. Oh, asked, asked. Um, you know that we we saw that whole uh, Supreme Court thing. Um, uh, that was all a, a dog and pony show with absolutely no facts, just a bunch of lies on top of lies on top of lies. And uh, oh, but we got to investigate. We got to do this. We got to do that. And it's like, uh, well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know the. You know, it's it's yeah. once again, it's the media telling you that these are the people you need to listen to. And, yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, Richard Hughes gave us a couple of bucks. Thanks, Richard Hughes. He says, "I support all of you for the two-way culture." We've got to we've got to appropriate. <laughs> How about this that. thing called the American culture? <laughs> right. Listen, I listen. I want to. I want to. I don't want to do things for any of those things. Honestly, I I'm interested in the truth. I'm interested in being better. Right. And we can't make up our own version of the truth. We, we need to look at things. And, well, the truth, you know, the truth is the truth. I mean, yeah. it's, like, it's like history. Just read it and it ain't always pretty, but that's what it was. Yeah. We're not all we're not all going to agree on things, but we need to look at it that way. OK. Uh, gun streamers here. Shout out to gun streamer. By the way, I see someone's like, oh, when are you going to talk about the hollow sun? Don't, we, we're going to do it. We got time. We got time here. We're just Damn feeling it. Adam out. We're figuring him out or whatever. This That's probably some of Adam's uh, supporters in here. They're doing it for the Adam culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And those people are not on their medication today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Huh. Hey, as yeah. long as you admit it, you yeah. <laughs> right. uh, uh, I mean, the hardest thing about being kind of different is admitting you're different. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So listen, let's get to some very important news. I also I threw this up for for you and Walter already, Adam. So I don't know if you saw it, but I think this is really important um, stuff for us to talk about. The CDC issues warning over zombie deer disease. I saw that now. I yeah. haven't. I the, haven't. The deer been, are now zombies. What does that mean? I haven't investigated it um, real close, but what what exactly is a zombie deer? Uh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I I have a lot of things I a lot of it's, things I do during the day, but I don't know. Investigating okay. zombie so, deer wasn't one. Have of you them. okay? Do you know what a zombie is? According you, to who? Do you? <laughs> Which culture? <laughs> All right. I can't. I can't teach you anything. Walter. I mean, if if it's a Haitian zombie or or a or a, or a, a Cuban zombie or a freaking do you, okay. Uh, we're just talking generic zombies. Do okay. You know what a zombie is? <laughs> the undead. Okay. Okay. So that have you ever seen a deer? Yes. Okay. So now you take those two thoughts. <laughs> zoop, zombie so, deer. Put it so together. This sounds like a rabid deer then. Uh. Yeah, but that's just not as sexy. So, okay, so here's, it says uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has issued a warning about a so-called zombie deer disease that impacts deer, elk, and moose. Loss of weight, stumbling, and okay. listlessness. Yeah, yeah. So, um, they've seen a bunch. They've seen a bunch of this. You well, know. that's that wasting. I think that's a wasting thing. I think I call it with the deer. Um, yeah. Where's the part where you were reading that? Uh, da, da, da. Oh. Yeah. So it's a rare progressive neurodegenerative disorder. Symptoms include weight loss, stumbling, and listlessness. That's a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Democrat that wants to be a socialist. <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking about Al Sharpton. Huh? Uh, oh yeah, half the, half the audience only heard zombie, and now they're all they're getting all their gear ready and they're suiting up, and they're like, <laughs> "It's finally here!" <laughs> and like, "Oh dear, zombie deer." Yeah. Richard Hughes <laughs> says, "Sounds like Mad Cow." The pants says, "Zombie deer is the name of my death metal band." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Get it. Uh, Ronald. Catholic Hopwood music says, lover says, you ever seen a deer having sex? Um, <laughs> I don't hang around that long. <laughs> I have seen. Yeah. I haven't seen that. I did. We did run across a wild, some wild hogs getting it on one time in the woods, but and like, they didn't get shot. It was. Or is, have, that, is that is that like is that not cool? All right. Like if you come across an animal that you're hunting, and that animal is right in the middle of intercourse, is that like against the hunting? We code? were this area we were going through was really heavily, uh, a lot of brush and really really thick. So we're we're kind of down creeping along. We hear this squealing going on. And it's like what the hell is going on? And we get down a little lower where you could clear and see, and there they are, this big old boar hog knocking up this little sow, you know. And then, then they saw us, and they're like, boom, they were gone, you know. Took so, off. I mean, okay. isn't that how you'd want to go, though? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Snoosh, uh, oh, and, and Walter Lewis is listening, so now you can give your shout-out to Lewis. <laughs> oh, Lewis. I'm working on your stock, man. We're getting your stock together. Yeah. Don't worry. Shout-out shout out to Lewis from all of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take care of you. I, I, I connect people. Oh, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, is that enough of the? Do you guys? Does Hollow Sun have a special zombie optic? <laughs> this is America wants to know this, Adam. Do you guys have um, a zombie optic? Please tell. Say yes. I know you're gonna pull oh, up a zombie gun right now. We're, we're just gonna say it. yes. And if you put it, if you if you cant it with a kill shot on the side, <laughs> it's a zombie killer, right? You just you just gotta cant it to the side. Oh. And then it's, it's a guaranteed zombie killer. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> fine. Okay. <laughs> There's someone's going to come out with a zombie reticle. How much you want to bet? There is one. Uh, really? I really? can't remember who it is. Yeah. There was, there was one of those cheap, you know, cheapo optics. There was somebody that had one, though. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's just, I'm just trying to go through. Uh, uh, Mr. Right? FNH says it's called EOTech. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I thought it was one of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Yute. <laughs> I'm just trying to. <laughs> uh, Scamp 900 says, "Good thing I bought lots of that Hornady zombie ammo." <laughs> yes. Now you know what it's for. All right, here's this other one. I'm going to go to this one. This is from uh, Fox News. Sell Montana to Canada for one trillion to ease the U.S. national debt. Petition says. So Montana. Why? Yeah, so Montana. What did they do to be, Montana? What did Montana I, do to them? I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Montana should be sold to Canada no. to help pay off some of the U.S.'s national debt, according to a petition on Change.org. Uh, Ian Hammond, the petition creator, wants to sell the treasure state to the nation's neighbor to the north for a trillion dollars. No way. So the first, the first comment on that petition when I saw it was. What are the twenty-two other or twenty-one other states we're going to sell to actually wipe out the debt? Yeah, yeah. And somebody was like, you know, we can just sell California. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what I'm saying. If we're going to sell anything, I say we sell California. Absolutely, right, right down yeah, or up the river, whichever way. There were some funny. The, the comments alone were worth that article. <laughs> yeah, this. Uh huh. Hmm. Who says a Canada is going to want to buy anything from us? Yeah, you know, come on. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the exchange trillion, rate. I mean. The, it's like eighty yeah. billion, eighty trillion dollars in their currency. So I think I mean, Mon Montana, Montana, uh, Montana have oil or anything like that. Or it's got it's oil. got lots of rocks. Oh, that's right. Oh, it's, it's north. It's North Dakota has oil. I think it's North Dakota. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so no, I don't know. I, have to look uh, I don't think I think a trillion sounds really cheap. Leave really Montana cheap. alone. All right. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I no. My answer to that will be no. If we're going to sell anything, we'll sell California. We could sell New York to Canada if they want. They want it. Have it. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not selling. So, come on. No, not selling New York either. No. Like Together. New Jersey, yeah. New York, California, yeah. Washington. You're sell, a little sell, bit. Yeah. Sell Bernie Sanders. Would you sell Bernie yeah, Sanders? Yeah, to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants that old part. Yeah. You know? Like yeah. eight, they've eight, got eight. their own socialists. They don't need. Yeah, our they got plenty. They got. They got the Trudeau types. Yeah, the Trudeaus are worse. So. Yeah. yeah. So here's something that someone sent me just before we went live here. By the way, shout out to everyone. People send me these. That's why I'm trying to hit these. So I think Lawrence Lorwick sent me the Canada sell Montana to Canada one. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to him. This one came from someone just before we started up the show here. So a congresswoman introduces legislation aimed at protecting law enforcement. A member of Congress from Central Florida has introduced a bill aimed at keeping law enforcement officers safe from dangerous weapons. 
Uh, Democratic Congresswoman mm-hmm. Val Demings Law Enforcement Protection Act would add armor piercing, concealable weapons as a category under the National Firearms Act. And then she spoke to this what kind uh, of dumb broad. Yeah, she spoke <laughs> to this radio. It would require owners of those weapons to have to go through background checks to have to get give their photo ID as well as bring a friend and be registered with the ATF. No. And you cannot own or transfer those weapons without permission. Let me ask this. Make, the, she's, like, she's introducing something. Does she even know what she's talking about? This woman's crazy. Uh, uh, when, Probably not. When, when, when did this become an issue? When, where, where, where is all this taking place? Where are these concealable armor-piercing weapons all being? Um, I don't even know what she's talking about. Neither I mean, does she. Is it? it it's, is, is she's basing this on the ammunition that you put in it? Because that means then it could be anything. Is, the that thing you, that gets me about all this gun stuff, this is all shit that's been hashed out. Yeah. But then she's also just guessing. She's just guessing. Well, and, and, and adding law enforcement to it. Oh, you know what? If it feels good, Hank. It there, feels good. Yeah. Everyone's going to be like, oh, we got to save the law enforcement. Save from the armor piercing stuff. Well, she, it says she spent 27 years with the Orlando Police Department running the political office before running political office. And she served as chief of police from 07 to 11. That does not mean a. Yeah. I hate to well, say it. These, it these, means something to them, but geez, oh, Pete, I mean, you think she'd learned something in 27 years. It, it, yeah, she's not. She's, uh, yeah, I think she learned something. I, yeah. I think she learned something. All right. Yeah. How she, to, was, how to retire. she was in the evidence room snorting a lot yeah. of coke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's well, what it's, she was it's in. It's just concealable weapons. I mean, is that your Glock? Is that your. Uh, this is I insane. Mean, I mean, it's it's such a broad definition. I mean, this is just a shotgun. You got a big enough jacket. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, You know, basically, they're just trying to put everything under an umbrella. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't have guns. That's what that's about. And the the world's going to, everything's going to be beautiful then. You know? Yeah. Right. And there'll be no crime. There'll be no, well, you know, the police will be safe. Now, when you become a policeman, I'm not a policeman, never been. But when you get the job of being a policeman, you got to, there's a little bit of understanding that there are people that, that are going to shoot at you and try to stab you and try wait, to... hold on. Is that a dangerous job? Yeah. Oh, I think it is a dangerous <laughs> job. Yeah. I mean, look, look at the car Very driving, just job. driving a car, you know, doing a pursuit or going to a scene, man. You might get, look, it's know. a dangerous job and I'm not trying to, because there's guys like, for example, what happened in my town, basically these guys were on lunch. Yeah. They were, they were, assassinated. someone just walked yeah. up and assassinated them. There's no law right. that you could put into effect that no, would stop that. Yeah. And nothing's going to stop that. Yeah. So, um, but they but don't seem, they don't get this. I mean, it's but just, that's what these guys are trying to do. They're trying to, there's push buttons like children, right, law enforcement, yeah, 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 right, uh, right. military vets, you know, so they're going to just yeah. keep putting these things in place and we're all going to support it because obviously no. these are things that we want to support. And we're then they're going to go. Yeah. By the way, all of those guns illegal right now. No, Every single not- gun is illegal because you could put any armor piercing, you know, rounds yeah. in there. So, yeah. well, yeah. Well, there, there was some things from the Roman Empire days. They said, you know, your you know your uh, country's doomed when you start legislating everything. When you make a rule for everything, your country's already going down. And I mean, you see something like this. I mean, they don't even know what they're talking about. They're trying to make a law about it. Yeah. Well, it's it's once again, it's that feel good stuff, and these people go, oh, we need to do something. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, look at pizzas here. Oh, oh pizza, yeah. pizza delivery from yeah, Spencer. Service. Yeah. Congratulations to Spencer. I saw that his Instagram went to, uh, he's got like over 100 followers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Congratulations uh, to him. What's your social media that you have out there, Adam, that you're using, by the way? So, you know. uh, on Facebook, it's Adam Litke dash competitive shooter. And uh, on Instagram, it's Adam underscore SASA for Shield and Sword Academy, my training company. Uh, you've got a training company also. Yes, I, I don't okay. do nearly as much because when you're are traveling, you sure? are you Jamaican stuff. or something? Are you just a very light skinned Jamaican? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's one of those things where you just uh, you start doing stuff, and next thing you know, you, you got a lot of pots and a lot of irons in the fire. Yeah. Either that, or he's Nigerian, Walter. He's got all these different jobs. <laughs> next thing I know, he'll be a crisis actor or something. Just stay I mean, out of that. Just stay out of that thirty below, twenty below uh, Chicago yeah, weather, and you'll yeah. be all right. I was, if anyone approaches you from Chicago, be careful. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> I stay out of that state. Yeah. Uh, Blue Except Dog for, Jones. Uh, Go ahead. 
Except for uh, what? Except for when we visit Sven from Manicore. It's the only time I go in that state. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> I guess, okay, for, for Sven, it's worth it. Um, Blue Dog Jones says, we got a serialized ammo bill floating around in Illinois. Yeah. Crazy. They already done that stuff, and it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, done all that ammo um, uh, marking and never saved, never, never, never solved one crime. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, man. What the, what the, uh, you know, some <laughs> of these people, <laughs> the bills that are going to be, the bills are going to be out there. These things are really crazy and insane. Well, this, yeah, this has to stop. We got to stop mean, with they, the laws. We don't need all these laws, damn it. We need a law that reduces all of Americans' laws to, I don't know, like 10. 10 laws. We got that uh, guy cranking out on his like horn press or Dylan press in his basement, not serializing, and he's going to jail for that. <laughs> like, what are you in for? I didn't serialize my rounds. Oh my gosh. Wow. We need to simplify laws in America. Too many damn laws. Whoa. I agree. Yeah, exactly. Casino Boss says, why do all the new slash proposed gun laws do nothing except making law-abiding citizens into criminals with the stroke of a pen? How about focusing on the real uh, current practicing criminals? Yeah, lock people up, make simple laws, okay? Murder? No, can't do that. Stealing people's property? Nope, can't do that either. Um, you know, I might add like an 11th law. If you're a politician and you commit a crime, death penalty. Straight to the rope. <laughs> Straight yeah. to the gallows, yeah. Yeah, so it's all about feeling good, man. Doesn't matter how it actually works. Just got to feel yeah. good about it. Because <laughs> people, people are getting into. I think I threw this up. Hey, let me throw this up. People are getting into all these laws, and they're sometimes messing stuff up. We were talking about this behind the scenes, but also several people um, sent me this. Ohio legislature's error, error may inadvertently ban many legal firearms. This, this one, this article is in Truth About Guns. A mistake, an error. Hmm. Let's see who wrote this. Uh, Kat Answorth. A mistake in writing up on an Ohio bill could inadvertently ban several types of already legal guns and must be fixed quickly, gun rights advocates say. At issues legislation approved by lawmakers last year, the bill also attempted to align Ohio law with federal law regarding short barrel weapons or generally speaking shotguns with barrel lengths less than 16 inches. Such guns are legal under federal law, but classified as illegal in Ohio, even though many stores sell them. As the bill was being drafted, a misplaced paragraph unintentionally lumped a variety of long guns into a prohibited category. Those in could include semi-automatic AK-47s and any long gun with a pistol grip which could also affect shotguns used in competitive shooting. Adam, this is right up your alley, so to speak. Yeah, this is in Ohio. It's, uh, it sounds like, from what I understand, they copied and pasted a paragraph in the wrong spot. Nobody caught it. It was supposed to help with the shockwave wording. Um, Ohio has had some weird laws. Like before, you couldn't have more than a 30-round magazine or was considered a fully automatic firearm, so it's NFA. They switched that finally a couple of years ago. Where now you can have like 40-round mags, 50-round mags, drums, whatever. But apparently this was helped being right by the uh, Buckeye Farm Association. Something was misplaced and it got through the process. And next thing you know, you're being told things like, uh, oh, I'm going to drop some. Like this guy, now I'm a bad guy. Because I, I mean, I got an AK-47, so probably a bad guy. But, uh, you know, next thing you know, an AK-47 makes you a criminal. Yeah, but um, Walter, he's got some kind of black hole over there that he keeps pulling guns out of. Good, I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically every, I mean, all these guns have pistol grips on them for the most part, right? Am I wrong? Right. Yeah. A lot of them this do. is terrible. This is terrible. Can Democrats in Ohio jump all over this and block any changes and then all of a sudden, in effect, get complete gun control in Ohio? No. I mean, supposedly no, but that's the, that's the thing everybody here is worried about is, you know, what if it gets prolonged? What if it goes into effect? I mean, none of the, we're, I mean, because the sheriff right here seem to be pretty conservative. But it's always that fear factor of what if, you know, what if they decide, yeah, they're going to enforce it. You know, are, are millions of us all of a sudden, you know, felons overnight? I don't know. Probably, probably. Okay, J. Derek Williams gave us five bucks. Thank you very much, J. Derek. Appreciate it, sir. Uh, he says, I just got the Savage MSR 15 Recon, and so far I love it. Awesome. Uh, do you have a recommendation for a good but affordable muzzle break? No. No, Walter. <laughs> I no. don't know. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think I like just the you know, there's lots of muzzle breaks out there. Yeah. Well, actually, let, let's let Adam chime in on this. Adam, you're a competitive what, what, shooter. What do you think would be a good yet affordable muzzle break? What caliber was it? It's the MSR, so I'm assuming that's five five uh, MSR fifteen recon. Let me look right, that up. I'm, I'm assuming that's five, an five, AR fifty. Yeah, let me look it yeah, up. Yeah, I I really like the uh, the Strike Industries King Comp. Uh, Mine's downstairs, but it looks like this. This is a 7.62 version. Um, oh, I really like yeah. this one. It does a really good job, and it's it's incredibly affordable. It's not you know it's not a hundred dollars for a comp, wow. um, and it's not it's got some flash suppression in it too. So it's really not uh, it's not gonna blow your eardrums, but you're not gonna see giant fireballs up in your gun either. Okay. So king king comp for sure from Strike. Uh, and how much was it again? I want to say they're like forty or fifty bucks. Okay um and here's here's what i would say on that you know i think that um the a2s are fine I, i'm assuming it came with an a2 on it probably you know just uh wait hold on i gotta pull i'm, I'm assuming it came with an a2 if you really want to change it you want to put stuff on there i think there's lots of different options to to look around for if you're going to put a suppressor or something on it then you probably want to get something but uh, i don't know if you're going to competitively shoot with it Right. So that's one thing, you know, you have to be so like some muzzle devices are really loud and irritating to people standing next to you. You got to think about all those. I prefer the flash suppressors. So there's a whole bunch of things to think in that. If you're going to change that, if you if you know that you're going to get into a suppressor, you might want to look into getting one that will, will help you mount whatever suppressor you're intending and getting in the future. Mm -hmm. Is that is that too? Is that bad advice, Walter? Do you think? No, no. The one that the one that he showed there looks very much like the um, Gemtech one that I have on that lightweight gun that I put together yesterday, except it just has the lugs on it for the quick detach um, Gemtech can. Yeah. So okay. did he did he say what he was going to use it for? Here, let me see. Yeah. Okay, he wants a he wants a muzzle break. So I don't know. Wow. What are you planning on doing with it? Are you compete? Are you competitively shooting? What's the reason why you're looking for a muzzle break? Um, I guess, you know, if you want to get more control and stuff like that. There's just, there's a ton of good, there's a ton of things out there, I have to say. So. And you can do stuff like with, with the Saker line. Not, I'm not saying I'm not endorsing the Saker line, but you can get the muzzle break or the uh, flash suppressor. And, you know, you can just put your suppressor right on top of it. So there's, there's options out there to go either way, even really. And still yeah. be suppressor ready if you're going to run a suppressor in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So I think all those things you have to take into you have to take into um, you know into account when you're doing that. Uh, he says, J. Derek says, awesome, thank you. Yeah, cost. There's another thing too that those gem tech muzzle brakes are not cheap, um, and a lot yeah. of a lot of the other. Um, well, that's what a lot of suppressor companies. That's where they get you, right? Right. Yeah, they get. You oh, know, yeah. Get to, yeah, they yeah. sixty, seventy, eighty dollars for a, a muzzle yeah. brake. It's like or a hundred. Yeah. Like, DCG44 well. says A2, damn it. Everyone, yeah, look, I don't really <laughs> think there's anything wrong with that. I know, I know there's lots of sexy muzzle devices out there. I'm not against it. We we have uh, a bunch of stuff uh, um, in that realm, but, you know, lots of things out there. Shadow Smith says cool hat. Check it out. Make it your cool AR hat. great again. This is from Brownells. Shout out to the Brownells guys for the hat. Walter actually has a MAGA hat. Somewhere close by. Oh, let's see. Here it comes. Boom. I should have signed this thing. Make America great again. Man, I joined yeah. the clan and didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look yeah. at that. Wow. Is, is, are people getting scared? What's happening here? Yeah. I mean, the Keller clan. You're in the Keller I've, clan. I've never seen I've never seen so many weak minded folks get so riled up over something that's so yeah. such a What's good concept. Right? There was a movie called The Flare, The Fear of a Black Hat. But what? there's obviously a fear of a red hat out there, and then what? there's people pulling guns on you for wearing a red hat nowadays. Too. What is what is what is so bad about making America great again? I can't think. Of Explain that to me. Yeah. Well, if you listen to the left, it was never great in the first place, I and mean, that's their motto. Well, yeah. well, that's your opinion then, right? Right. I think I America's know. been pretty cool, pretty great. I think yeah, it could I mean, be greater. Um, you know, if you don't like it, back it and get the out. You know, I mean. Yeah. There's lots of good socialist countries that won't don't want you. <laughs> they won't take yeah. you. Yeah, get out. I mean, it's so great that small guy had to hire people from a different country to attack him. <laughs> so 
yeah. he's the now, first guy. Those brothers, Nigerian. those brothers say that they are not. Well, they are Nigerian uh, descendants, but they were born in America. Okay. Oh, okay. So they want their proper respect. By the way, hey, would you blow me? Says <laughs> he's still waiting for the shout out. I gave you the shout out. Yeah. You what missed you it. Now yes. he's getting greedy. Yeah, you missed it. Okay, Walter, can you give him a shout out? Hey, would you blow me? Welcome to <laughs> Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <There you> <laughs> <go>. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, uh, let me see. I think I went through most of my new stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys have any uh, any new stuff that you want to go over there, but I went through most of my stuff. So let's see. Did you bring some hollow sun optics with you? Did you? Tell oh, I was supposed did. to bring them with me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that's what's on the guns, but yeah, we got we got plenty of them, man. We got. Uh, uh, we got I'm not I'm not gonna think you have EOTex on those guns. <laughs> so oh, I, okay, should, I should not bring the EOTex out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, this, that's the 507. That's the pistol guy. Okay. He's uh he's much more widely available now. What's the um, new stuff? What's the new stuff for 2019? Is that new or that's been out for? A while? Uh, this is this has been out for a little while. It's just kind of shipping hardcore now. We did, uh, you know, so we got these guys out. They're also coming out in green. They're coming out in titanium versions, and we are doing a five hundred nine likely, which will be a fully enclosed version uh, for those that want that. This is a little bit of an open in the back. Um, we also have a magnifier coming out, and don't listen, Lewis. It was supposed to be here today, and uh, UPS or UP, USPS screwed up, and it's at the postal service right now. Because uh, I was supposed to have the magnifier to show you guys, but it's not mm. here. <laughs> is it magnifier for what? Uh, it's a three-time magnifier for your red dot. Uh, okay. And the glass, I've got, I think, three or four different magnifiers, and it is the clearest glass I've seen so far. How does it? Uh, it definitely rivals the high-end one. How does it attach? How does it? Uh, it attaches uh, just your pick, your pick rail, and then it's got a throw to oh, 45 okay. and a full throw. Okay. Um, it's got a riser mount in between, so you can do that as well. And I want to say, if I remember correctly, the MSRP was going to be like, uh, or something there was like $199. Uh, yep. So very, very affordable, very competing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brick says uh, postal service delivery sucks. Oh, my yeah. gosh, yes. <laughs> they overnighted <laughs> it, and somehow they screwed that up. Um, yeah, there's that. There's. Uh, so you got the 509. That's the How many, um, op what kind of optics? Is that the only one you guys have for pistols, handguns? Uh, right now, yeah, I mean, specifically di designed for it, but you will see guys um, like, uh, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank, and I, I've got my phone and everything. But there's some guys that uh, that run the 510s like this up on top of their guns, uh, especially their open class guns. They'll run these uh, if they're competing. And it's just because a giant viewport. And you can take this hood off, too, and make it a little bit smaller. Uh, <clears throat> a big change for these this year was this will come, uh, eventually they'll come out in a, in a gold color as well, a yellow color. Uh, and if you're colorblind, you can see yellow, but you can't see red and green. So if you're colorblind, you can use it. And so actually, one of the, the best things that we can actually see is yellow slash gold. Hmm. Um, there's also a BDC reticle that will start coming in these and in the 512s. And that BDC reticle gives you uh, different drops, different zeros. And hmm. it was a phenomenal hit at SHOT Show. Um, okay, and another thing, which That's a bullet drop composition? Yes, the BDC. exactly. Okay. The, uh, the mm -hmm. fancy term. Uh, and then this guy, there's also a fully enclosed one, a 512, which we did a demo test on. And uh, that one will also have a bunch of different features in it. That's going to be new uh, coming out next month or two. And that one, uh, I don't have the one we destroyed. It's actually at, at the Hollis on headquarters. But uh, that thing lasted two shotgun blasts from a 12-gauge, a drop at 8 foot on concrete, 16 feet on a rock, 100 foot off a rock wall onto a rock. And then it survived two 9 millimeters, and the third 9 millimeter finally killed it. Um, the third nine millimeter blew up inside the battery housing, <laughs> kind of shut her down. Huh. Mm. So it is built okay. like a freaking tank. Oh, okay. I got to take cool. it. So, but you don't have one of those, right? I oh, do not have coming. one now. It is uh, okay. the lovely USPS managed to uh, hold on to it for me. Okay, cool. J. Derek Williams gave us another five bucks. He says, uh, America has always been great. People yes. don't flee the U.S. to seek asylum in other nations. Instead, <laughs> they seek their lives on raft. They risk their lives on rafts to get to the U.S. Uh, very true. That. And then you've got people who some people do leave America to go overseas and and join ISIS ah. and then try to beg to come back to America. But we will forever disavow those people. Oh. Of ISIS. 
Right, Walter? I'm into that. Yeah. Walter's getting the sandwich right now. Sorry, yeah. I mean, if you Pizza. if it's so bad and then you leave and then you go become a ISIS sperm bank, um, <laughs> and then you decide after you um uh, after you find out it's not um you know, with rainbows and, and unicorns and all that, and now you want to come back and cry? No. We don't need yeah. you. Yeah. The Norse horseman says, I'm not colorblind. Can I still use it? Maybe you absolutely that's... can. Uh, we, you know, it, it was a proof of concept to a point, and SHOT Show saw the yellow. People were asking to buy it left and right. They saw it, and they're like, this is fantastic. Yellow. I'm trying to, so I'm that's trying more to... recognizable to the human eye, you're saying, than anything. Correct. I'm trying yep. to envision a yellow. Yeah, I've never... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if, if you if you Google it or you do this like you know check out for your shot show, there's a couple of things that we did on on site at the Hall of Sun booth and get some guys got some videos and pictures of the inside of them, um, and you know it, it was it was a huge proof of concept that people just freaking loved it, and wow. so it, it'll be it'll be a new option. So you have red, green, and yellow or well gold reticles. Uh, so we're we're constantly innovating that, and we're still keeping the battery life. So you're still talking. 50,000 hour battery life on the, uh, the larger optics like these and like the 510. And then you're talking 100,000 hour battery life in the, uh, the pistol red dots. Yeah. And you still get has, go ahead. multiple reticles. You still get multiple reticles too. So you still get the uh, circle dot, the dot, or the circle, depending on which optic you get. Okay. And then you guys are pretty much uh, known for the uh, solar powered. Right. Are you guys still doing a bunch of solar powered optics? Yeah. So, uh, Solar fail safe, which you know, it's right there. So you have a hundred thousand hour battery life, and then, and then for some reason, if after ten years you decide, you know what, I'm still not going to change my battery because I'm just too cheap to afford a twenty thirty two with my eighty cents. Uh, this guy will actually run the optic even without a battery in it. And uh, shot show, I don't know if we were trolling people or if we, you know, I don't know what was going on, but we actually put some of the optics out there without batteries, and people are like, oh, it doesn't do that. And I'm like, I'm like, you like that optic? Yeah, yeah, I like it. There's no battery in it. You know, you open the battery train, they're like, son of a gun, you got me. Um, so we were trolling some people at SHOT Show. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the solar panels, you'll see them in the 510s. These ones are a little bit bigger, but they're uh, they're right back in here. Those are all solar panels. So okay. and there is a small Hold on, let me lock it on you. Do that, show that again. Yep. Okay. And so it does charge a small capacitor too. Um, it's not recharging the battery because 2032s aren't rechargeable, but there's a small capacitor in there. It will charge. So you'll, you'll get some life, even if there's nothing going on, uh, for a couple hours. Um, okay. I've had mine last as long as like eight hours, but, uh, we don't, we don't guarantee that. Yeah. So, um, Archangel, what was it? Archangel? I think Archangel wanted to know if that, um, if that tough optic, he's like, can it survive the SHTF 50? So we'll have to uh, so I will say, we were talking about Lewis earlier, uh, <laughs> He was one of those in here. He puts stuff on crazy things. He puts them on 50 cals. He puts them on full auto locks, which the handguns are really all the cyclic rate and the G-force are on handguns. You know, that's incredibly abusive. It's surviving on that stuff. Um, some of the optics, now that one's not because it's so large, it's not put on one. But it's been put on 50 cals and everything else. It's been put on shotguns. Um, yeah, it, it stands up to the abuse of time and the abuse just from the guns in general. Um, I mean, I mean, again, the toughest thing you can do is just put something on your slide. And have that G force just constantly oh, going oh. like this. I mean, yeah. that's that's where you get that crazy G force. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm getting a bunch of things here. Fresh Fowler says yeah. Walter is constantly eating, but he puts up <laughs> the perfect sign. And then he says, "Love you, Walter." So I stopped he's, eating he's, right now. I'm he's finished. giving you the fist bump, also. Boom. So this, but I think this is a trap, Walter. If you look at it, it's a trap. Uh -oh. oh well, in certain places, this you know, yeah. <laughs> is that white power? <laughs> uh, well, over in no. Germany, when you do this, it means you, know, you want to get it on. So uh, oh. yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You don't do the okay <laughs> thing over there. That means. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then someone is saying you're. Oh, uh, Simpson Road Larry says Walter has good teeth. And then <laughs> there's a whole conversation going on about your teeth out there. Sorry, right? I, you know. Yeah, are, are they dentures? No. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> <Dentures>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't hesitate on that one. <laughs> no, nope. sorry. Uh, okay, <laughs> go Let's... ask uh, go ask Bernie about his dentures, not me. <laughs> uh, oh boy, I you got your dentures right here. Yeah, right here. Walter, you, Walter, you got to do the salute, the glasses salute right there. 
Hold on, hold on. Let's pushing see. Pushing my glasses up. Pushing my glasses <laughs> up, man. There we go. Uh, yeah, Brian Quick says Walter is so old his dentures are made from wood. <laughs> hey, just got him termite treated, son. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So listen. So here's a serious question, Adam. Where are the yeah. optics made? What kind of glass is it, etc.? Et yeah, so uh, so we have two different plants. We have one in China. We have one here. Uh, the one in China, we literally make everything in house. So I mean, there's there's nothing that we don't do in house. That's how the prices, you know, we're as we're as affordable as we are, as, as competitive as we are, with such good quality. Um, we have a limited li limited lifetime warranty or a limited warranty on the um, the uh, classic line. We call it the red reticle, and then we have a lifetime warranty, a limited lifetime warranty on the elite line. Um, I can tell you our return rate is astronomically low. Um, I mean, it's just so crazy how low it is. And I've really never come across anyone that didn't purposely destroy the optic. that didn't say that, you know, they weren't helped. However, we could help them. Uh, the thing that we try to avoid, I know a lot of shooters from the other, from the other companies, when you do that lifetime warranty, you throw it out there, you say, Hey, no matter what you do, it's repaired for free. You have a lot of guys and I know some who've done it. They go out there and go, you know, gosh, I'd love to have that new one of these. And they go out there and they purposely destroy it. And they go, my new one, please. And all it does is drive the prices up. You know, you, you, that money's got to come from somewhere. Uh, yeah. And our goal is to keep offering that super high quality optic at the affordable price. Um, you know, not too long ago, I mean, a decent optic was 500 bucks. I mean, that was that was your entry point for something that said they trusted. Oh, yeah, and that was low. That was a low right. price. Because remember, there was the, um, what was the adage? If you buy if you buy a firearm, your optic has to cost twice the price of the firearm, right? Oh, dear. right. And now, I mean, now I look at uh, which one is it? Yeah, this guy. So I look at this five ten. This is on nine millimeter carbine, but it was on my five five six carbine. Uh, this thing has got probably somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand rounds of five five six, and probably closer to twenty thousand rounds of nine millimeter. And it's still going great. I mean, I, I actually still have my kids actually have it now. I have the original prototype of these where the buttons were in the back and my kids have it on their airsoft gun and just throw it all over the house. And the thing's <laughs> still running like a champ and it's been bounced off so many concrete pavements and off walls. It looks terrible, but it's, it's one of the original prototypes. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you're getting a, a super quality uh, optic and we're still making a name for ourselves. I mean, and I think we're, you're seeing more and more, of the big name companies, you see their Instagram posts or Facebook posts, it's got our optics on it. You know, we're out there, we're talking to people, we're helping people. Uh, we go to events, you know, I go to a bunch of events. We're going to be at the Girl in a Gun event, for example, with another, with 500 plus ladies who are going to be out there showing them how to use the optics, you know, how to, how to do stuff. When, when, when is the uh, girl, when is the Girl with a Gun event? Uh, I believe it's in Texas and it's April like uh, 11, 12, 13, 14th, I think. It's a Thursday through a Saturday. Um, okay. It's actually the same time as the NFA review shoot, uh, the rescheduled NFA review shoot. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, it's, you know, we keep doing that. You know, we have, um, we have, we have law enforcement, we have military using our optics now. Um, this one's garnered a lot of favor with, uh, with law enforcement and some of the military guys, uh, huge requests that shot some other things for the military and law enforcement guys. Um, the 512, which I don't have one right now, but the enclosed version of that 510, huge, huge military interest in that one. Uh, so I think you're going to keep seeing that and it's getting more and more tested. And as we get feedback, we keep growing with that feedback and taking that feedback and, and looking at it. And you're, and you see stuff, you know, one of the things I love, I'm, I like AKs. Um, you see these, the guys in the Ultimac rails and a lot of optics fail when they're on this Ultimac rail, how hot it gets and everything else. And this is actually one of the, uh, the original, original optics we had. And this thing's got somewhere between 20 and 30,000 rounds on it. And it just keeps on, keeps on trucking. You know, it's a good optic. Um, so it's actually the original gen one of our optics that had a proprietary base on it, uh, which we don't do anymore, but yeah, I mean, these things hold the test of time. I mean, they're, they're crazy reliable and they, they run great. Yeah. Um, by the way, I totally forgot that you were coming in today, that you were going to be on the show today. Otherwise I would have brought in, I have the ACSS red dot Yeah. that you guys, yep. um, that's like a interesting thing, right? Because kind of. Is that a collaboration with um, Primary Arms and Hollow Sun, or what, what's what's going on? Yeah, it's a collaboration with Primary Arms. Uh, they're they're good friends of ours, and uh, they created that reticle. Um, I don't want to butcher any facts, but if I remember correctly, they created the reticle. They own the reticle, and then they put in a red dot, 
and you put a magnifier behind there, and I still hear guys that come to the shot show booth, they're like, they're like, dude, I'm hitting it 600 yards with my 5.56 five, with this reticle. Um, and it's it's a fantastic reticle. I mean, I, I like it because I, I actually run one in my uh, my primary arms uh, scope that I have on here. It's got the ACS. This one has the Griffin reticle, but I've got mm-hmm. one with the regular ACSS as well. Um, you know, when you're going out to five, 600 yards in these competitions, you know, I, I've run that as well. And, you know, yeah. it's, I mean, it's I, good partnerships. I, I discovered that one through uh, Dimitri from Primary Arms. Yeah. Uh, he, he took me out in the desert, Lola and I, and we were shooting that thing. at. I did it at 600 yards with that right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I think um, he didn't need the uh, three times magnifier. I did, though. Yeah, I, I would need it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I would much rather cheat. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah I'd just be throwing cool. rounds at that point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Why not? But uh, I did do it, and I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing. So I do have one of those, and, and uh, I'm really a fan of that. Um, let's see here. Shadow Smith wants to know what optics do you guys make at the U.S. plant? Which ones are made there? Uh, I believe everything will start being made there. Uh, we just we just built that in the past, I want to say, 12, 24 months. Um, and if nothing else, it'll give us double production as well. Um, okay. So, we're, you know, we're, we're investing. I mean, they are investing here as well in the U.S., and you're seeing that with, if nothing else, the team they have, the sales force they have, um, Paulson's very much into the U.S. market. So what does that mean? Is is there going to be, um, you know, is there going to be different prices for the ones made in the U.S.? The same price? What's going? Well, you know, I, I, I believe from from my limited understanding of the new plants, uh, I don't really go into California at all. Um, but uh, it'll be it's nothing. There's not going to be any difference price wise or anything. They're just investing here to make stuff here. Oh, it's in California. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there, there's okay. a whole story about how they got uh, ran out of out of florida years ago oh they did um, they got ran out of florida oh. yeah so they they went to the place that had the best ports and unfortunately you got florida and you got california to have all the ports for the most part so oh, okay. yeah makes yeah. sense makes sense uh B- blue dogs uh blue dog jones blues dog jones says dimitri is a stud <laughs> dimitri is a stud yes he is he is um probably a lot easier to do military stuff that's made here too we're in Cali. Correct. No, in the U.S. Oh, in the, oh well, yeah, okay. in the U.S. Yeah. Oh, you said it's a lot easier if it's made here. Right. They they, they 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 like that better. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. Understood. But the prices you're saying the prices there's not going to be a huge like any kind of differences with the prices. Here. Yeah, as far as I know, which uh, I mean, I just I just pull triggers sometimes, but as far as I know, there's not going to be any difference in price. Um, I, I think that the team in general is very focused on on keeping that high quality, affordable price. Okay, and Razor JB says, when are the subdued ones coming out without all the white lettering? The sub- oh, um, gosh, I I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if there is a plan to have them without white lettering. That's something I'll bring back to the guys. Uh, what I do see with some of the guys, especially the AK guys that, you know, hand, hand paint their stuff, they just spray over it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they, they just spray, they just duct tape the front and the back of it and spray paint it. <laughs> Okay, make it make it more tactical. Right. Um, yeah. So L- Lola wants to know what the Florida uh, the Florida story is all about. What happened there? What did Florida do to you guys? Uh, so I have ver- I have very limited knowledge on this, but there there was something that happened where they were at, and it sounds like it sounds like a politician. I remember correctly, and I'm probably gonna butcher it. Somebody will yell at me, but uh, there was something that happened, and they pretty much just pretty much annexed them right out of there. They didn't have a choice, so they moved and went to California years ago now. Um, Louis okay. Trino, though, is actually from Florida, if I'm correct, pretty much where they were at. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, oh, he, so they were in Miami or something? They were somewhere by Miami because I don't think Louis was that far from where the original shop was at. Uh, this is okay. way before my time. So, okay. Some of that, because they, they do lasers as well, uh, which we have lasers we sell for guns too, but they've done lasers for years, Hollow Sun has. And that was actually how they started in the market. Um, now okay. we have ones, we have, we have pick rail ones like this too. And we have ones with IR, IR illuminators, all kinds of stuff. Um, this is actually a, a early gen one that takes a double A battery. Um, but it serves my purpose. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, uh, someone wants to know, um, so are you guys bringing in parts and stuff like that from China and just assembling it here in the U S or what's, What's going on there? That, that I don't know. I don't know what the end goal end goal will be. I know our big thing is that we do everything in-house, um, even up to the Cerakote. So the uh, the Cerakote, which you can find these on Optics Planet, but the FDE ones that were a big hit, 
these are all Cerakote in house. They're actually not taken anywhere else. Oh, so cool. that's a, that's a big thing with hollow sun is, um, we don't rely on any other people in essence. So there's no downtime. If somebody says, Hey, we can't Cerakote for five months or if we can't do glass or we can't do screws. It doesn't matter because we do it on our own. You know, as long as the raw products there, we handle everything. Um, right. So some of that might be logistics of making sure we have everything set up. But uh, Holosun's, it's, it's a great company that does, they, they take a lot of pride in it, so they do everything in-house whenever they can. Right. Um, and I think, uh, was it, let me see, let me make sure I give the right credit. Okay. <laughs> I think I think I saw Chihuahua Choker say, uh, as soon as as soon as you guys start making them in the U.S., they're all in. <laughs> I think that was. I think I'm giving the right credit there to that uh, one. I'm I'm definitely glad to say you know we're you know we're we're going that way. But I will also say, um, you know, I mean these days what's not made in some other in another country. I mean glass from some of your I'm optics sorry. you do. It you know yes we all want to be made in America, but uh, I can tell you that when I first bought my first Holosun optic. My personal opinion was, I think they were $120 on uh, primary arms. I bought one of the first ones and I thought, you know what? I'll have an optic that'll last for a year or so, but for a hundred bucks, what do I care if it you know dies after a year? And uh, that's, that's this guy. And he's still going, gosh, four or five years later. Um, mm -hmm. He's, he's beat up. He's got some paint missing, but uh, usually you can't say too many optics for 150 bucks that put up with 20,000 rounds. Um, mm -hmm. And he's, you know, I finally changed the battery, I think, a year ago on him. <laughs> yeah. I think um, this, there's a couple of things going on with that. I think if you can get Made in America stuff, it's good. If you can get it, if you can mm -hmm. afford it. Um, I think there's lots of things that we think are made here and they're not made here. Lots of American cars actually are not made here. Although, on right. the flip side of that, there's well, quite a few Japanese, like uh, Toyota, Honda. They all have factories here. Nissan. Yeah. Uh, Nissan. Yeah, Nissan as well. So... Um, you know, I think it's a balance out there for people. I don't like switching my optics uh, between guns, and so I like to have everything to just have their optics on them. Oh, so, right. You know, no, I'm a big fan. Um, of, I'm a big fan of the same thing. Is once I zero something, I don't want to take it off and have to re-zero something. I, yeah. you know, the, I don't find a lot of enjoyment in zeroing. I find enjoyment in shooting, just not zeroing. Yeah, and so. then correct me if I'm wrong here, but you guys are like. The Hollow Sun is pretty much made in the same uh, place factory as uh, primary arm stuff, right? Or uh, are you allowed to talk about that? Is that true? Not I can't. True? I can't confirm or deny any OEM clients relationships we have. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <coughs> um, so Brian Quick wants to know: Are all Hollow Sun Red Dot optics? Do they have etched reticles? I think. Someone asked that yeah, so before. There's, so there's an, there's an emitter in there, and and that's how they're all done. There's there's no holographic stuff being generated in the middle. Okay. Yeah, and and, and, and just to clarify, you can't because usually a follow up question somebody always has is, can you get like a red, green, and yellow in, or you know, red and green in the same optic? The answer is no, because you with those cheaper optics that do that, you see a shift in zero because usually those emitters are lined up, is my understanding. So you actually, when you switch like from red to green, it actually shifts this way or this way, and you shift that reticle uh, left or right. That's why they don't hold zero all the time. You got to re-zero with whatever color you're using. With these ones, they're all red or they're all green, and it just takes away part of the reticle. So if you have the circle dot and you just do the circle, it's like that, the dot's like that. So it, it doesn't actually shift the zero at all. So you're not going to have to re-zero when you change reticles or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, the pants says his last Chevy was made in Mexico. Uh, his Honda was built in Ohio. Uh, you know what? It's it's funny to say say it, but I mean, how many times do you see you know Toyota and Honda investing in the U.S. like crazy? You know, they build plants yeah. over here. Yeah, my my Fiat's the engine's made in Detroit. It's assembled in Mexico, and the transmission came from Italy. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it was designed in Italy. Right. So you know, come yeah. on. I mean, you know, you can try to go all American, but you can't do it hardly. So, yeah. right. And uh, Dan hates you. This is Dan hates you's comment. Okay. <laughs> Dan hates you says, boo, you make SIGs, red dots, fess up. <laughs> Can I confirm or deny any OEM clients that we made? There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you Why go. you hate read, me, Dan? Why you hate me? <laughs> read between the lines. Read between the lines on that one. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, all right, so can you tell us, show us that uh, X95, the paint job once again, and yeah. uh, tell us about like how it's set up. Is it like a competition setup? What do you have going on here? Yeah, so I have two different ones. Uh, this one actually has a primary arms uh, scope on it. Uh, we're actually doing an event, and primary arms is generous enough to donate this to the event so that the ladies could have uh, just some different stuff to shoot. Um, this is my competition X95, though, uh, one of them. Usually there's a 510 mounted on here. And it's got a, a, a gearhead works rail. It raises the optic up a little bit. So it's a mm -hmm. little bit, you can see the, the difference in the gap here. Okay. Bring it up to eyesight a little bit more. Um, is that the Razorback? Uh, no, that's not the Razorback. Yeah, this is the oh. Razorback. Okay. This is the Mini. So there's a full one that goes out to here. Okay. But with competition, I'm not running anything that needs more space than that. So I just okay. run the Mini. Um, I think, if I'm working, this is actually the original prototype of that one uh, that I have from forever ago. Um, this one, uh, somebody's probably thinking that looks weird, but... These are actually the hand guards, and I just run them up front, so I have I have a better grip um, up towards the front of the gun. Uh, so I run these I run these guys up, and then uh, suppressor will come off, and we're shooting competition unless I'm allowed to run it. Uh, and there's usually a Strike Industries King Comp on it because they're affordable and they they do the job really well. Uh, I've got a Manicore Arms folding charging handle on it. Nice. And if you're a uh, if you're a bullpup guy, these are super nice just because it folds out of the way uh, when you're doing different stuff. Uh, it's got a Cerakote. This is Victor's Legacy in Ohio. Uh, they do a great job. They're really kind of making a name for themselves as so they're doing this stuff. Um, this is kind of that's that's the two two three that I run. Yeah. Uh, now just the, show. Uh, I like that Dagoba next exit thing on there. Just oh sure. yeah. So, I like that, so they are just as nerdy as the rest of us. And, yeah. Hold uh, that you know up close. Love. Yeah. Let's see that. Cool. Look at that. So they know I love <laughs> patches, and I show up, and he goes, "Dude, I got you a new patch." He took off the one I had. And he slaps this one on, and I'm like, "You're killing me, man!" I'm like, "That's awesome." Oh, that's a patch. Uh, yeah, it's a patch. I, I, so what I found out is everybody's customized their guns. With the X95s, with the IWI stuff, there's not exactly like random places to put stuff, like a butt stock. So I just started throwing uh, Velcro on them. Oh, good idea. And then I can just throw my patch. So I usually have a Hollow Sun patch on them, which I think this other one has a Hollow Sun patch, or IWI, or something with the uh, yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. So that one more uh, thing before you put that though, down. Let me let me get a yeah. close up of the back end of that again. Uh, what are those like three devil? Oh, three V's. Okay. Oh, this is from the uh, the. Uh, so I actually didn't catch on to it earlier. The first time I saw it, this is modeled after a helmet from an X-wing fighter. Okay. So if you look at Star Wars, this is most of the stuff you see on an X-wing fighter helmet, um, and they've really kind of pulled it all together. They put the Rebel logo up front. And uh, they just kind of knocked out of the park. But these, these guys just, they're just as nerdy as the rest of us. And they come up with the craziest stuff that I'm not, I, I'm an accountant. I am not this ingenuitive when it comes to uh, designing stuff. Um, but yeah, so, so they run this stuff. Uh, While well, I run this gun, uh, I've got a Geisley, uh, a Geisley lightning bow trigger in there. That's the only trigger that's really made for x 95s And I've got a uh, shooting site there in Ohio by Faxon, uh, trigger pack inside of there. Um, okay. So. I mean that's that's that guy and then, very nice. Uh, I spend a lot of time shooting uh, PCC, and that's my PCC one. So you see the hollow sun patch so down PCC here. So PCC is a pistol, pistol caliber carbine, uh -huh. so nine millimeter. Um, and uh, it's kind of it's kind of gotten ridiculous because now it's all about magazine capacity at time. So we have these, our oh. sixty round nine Holy. millimeter magazines <laughs> from Holy Taylor Lord. Freelance. It's Holy been nicknamed the Black Mamba. Uh, <laughs> That is awesome. Uh, That's awesome. That's yeah, a so serious you know, stick right there. Oh my goodness! So you're running around with this thing. It's like a third <laughs> leg. It is. I mean, that's what it comes down to. The jokes never yeah. cease to uh, cease yeah. to amaze me. <laughs> um, a little Razorback rail on this guy. Another Geisley lightning bow trigger. Tav Tav D trigger packing from shooting sight. Uh, I run some lasers on these guys just because you can hip shoot uh, in uh, PCC and pistol cap carbine. So I just throw a laser on. I can hip shoot. <laughs> From the start. Okay, that's interesting. Then, uh, <laughs> yeah, you just kind of line her up and da -da -da. and then uh, I've got two five tens. They kind of one offsets the other, so one zero to like fifteen yards, and one zero to like point blank, and you just kind of flip the gun and shoot your point blank stuff with the uh, with the offset. Um, this one uh, is the first order stormtrooper kind of set up, and I think this one I think we hit like fifteen thousand rounds, give or take, on this one recently. So. The guns take some abuse. It looks it looks dirty, but it's, it is dirty. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, but, it's uh, got a good it's got a good paint job on it. Um, the, yeah. Let me see. There's something here. Uh, okay, Armament and Axis wants me to give a shout out to his son, 
uh, at Hill Climb, Ohio. JB, oh. so shout out. Somebody from Ohio. Nice. Yes, shout out to Hill Climb, Ohio. There you go. Okay. Uh, Vanessa Kitty says sci-fi for life. Yes. So, um, and then I see there's some questions here about the the uh, creator summit that Tyvin's doing. Um, if anyone's interested in that, please get in touch with Tyvin. He's in the chat. Get the details from him. Um, I think we're we're planning to have Tyvin come on and talk about that. But if you guys are interested in that, get him. And then Hill Climb Ohio the JB says thank you. You're welcome. Shout out there, just making sure I'm, you know, getting, uh, hitting everyone up there. All right, so let's see. Um, what other stuff do we have go? Okay, you got another gun. Let's see it. Yeah, so this is uh, this is one that you're, we're seeing more of. IWI is doing a good thing with this. So this is the IWI Galil. Uh, think of like an AK, but actually ergonomic. And, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the stuff taken care of. So you have your charging handle on what you'd expect to be the correct side, you know, unless you're left-handed. So you have your charging handle on this side, so you're not reaching yeah, up that's, underneath. Yeah, that's for like Walter. Um, yeah. Right. The the <laughs> Walter's got the, right now uh, busy with a very important call. He's ordering more pizza. Let's see. Let's take a look at Walter. He's like, yeah, uh, I need my pizza with uh, extra sausage, and uh, I also need pineapple slices on my pizza. You good, Walter? Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Did he mute us? <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He did. Okay. Go, keep so Adam was showing the, this Galil, which I think is it. Set, yeah. Are you left-handed, Adam? I'm right-handed. So everything's set up oh. right-hander on this. Uh, the charging okay. handle will be on your on your left, so you don't have to reach underneath with your left hand and try to rack it. Uh, okay. Safety is ambidextrous. There's actually safety on both sides, so you can run it ambi. Um, this one's set up. Uh, my youngest kid loves the Hulk, so we decided to do a, a Hulk theme. Hulk so uh, on that side it says Hulk smash, on this one it says always angry. Yeah. Um, Very cool. And there's the Hulk kind of on this. Uh, we've got a Midwest Industry rail, got the King Comp on it for Strike, and uh, we're actually shooting the Noveski Carby match with this guy, and then the uh, the Klosh match, um, the Oktoberfest will be shooting with this guy as well in Utah. Okay. Very nice, so, Walt. Did you have any questions about that one, Walt? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Just kind of taking it all in. Just taking yeah. it He's just in. thinking about pizza still. He's like, it's not here yet. <laughs> no, he got his pizza. I'm just I got it. my oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Panhead413 says he forgot the wings and cheesy bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Vanessa Kitty says, how close can you be to an EMP and still be alive in a week? An EMP? Well, that's EMPs up in the uh, up high up in the atmosphere. Yeah, so. EMP uh, um, should affect electrical devices, but not people. And melt your Glock. Yeah. Yes, and of course, <laughs> if you you know no. you can speak to Ty you can speak to Tyvin about that. It does melt any polymer uh, <laughs> guns that you have. I don't uh, I don't know how much the EMP affects the the, the human. Um, Versus um, the humans electronics. Maybe if you have like if you have a pacemaker, those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, that might not be a good day. You might not have yeah. a good day then. If um, you can't live without your phone. <laughs> um, yeah, if you if you go into you know if you go back, yeah, if all of a sudden everything doesn't work and you can't get by, you you know, I'm sure some people would off themselves in the end. But yeah, what well, sure somebody becomes superhuman somehow with it. Yeah, with an EMP. <laughs> yeah, just somebody the right like, solution. Oh, yeah, you right. <laughs> happen to fall into the acid bath at the same time that the EMP right. goes off and the, the moon is in its second vortex or some craziness. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, Panhead wants to know, Panhead 4 and 3, will your optics survive an EMP? Uh, well, that's... <laughs> that's what, I mean, what electronic will survive the EMP if it's not protected? I None. guess that's. I guess that's. That was my thing. Is I mean, it's if it if it fries electronics, even a solar panel is not going to help you on that one. I mean, but, if, it's, uh, if if it's got a chip inside there of some sort, right? Yeah. But I think I think you've got bigger problems if, if an EMP yeah. actually happens. Because um, <laughs> um, a little yeah. advice, a little advice, some backup iron sights. So, right, yeah, I mean, iron, which iron. you should have any. This you should have anyway. Yeah, nothing um, beats irons. Did you remove the irons from the X ninety five? On two of those, I did the competition ones, but on the on the home defense one, for those that don't know, your your irons actually flip up out of the rail on the stock rails. This one has a flashlight on top of it, so it's not going to flip up. But uh, 
Yeah, and the X95s, even with the Galil, the Galil has stock iron sights as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. – I'm, I'm more worried about the roving gangs of miscreants if we have an actual EMP. Yeah. Plus, I live like, I don't know, 20 miles from a nuclear power plant. So, yeah. I mean, I may all become the Hulk. I don't know. I mean, maybe the right yeah. solution is an EMP in my body and a uh, nuclear plant. They have um, – after Chernobyl down here, Crystal River Nuclear Power Plant, after Chernobyl, they put up sirens. At, uh, like on US-19, there's sirens up there. Did they do that down by you guys? Yeah, we have, we have sirens everywhere. I actually work for one of the agencies that monitors the nuclear power plant. Okay. And uh, the redundancies are insane. I mean, it's 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 so redundant. It's, it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brian Quick says, sometimes I pray an EMP happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half the gun guys are praying that EMP yeah. or zombie apocalypse like, happens. Come on, don't let me die right. with all these guns and Yo. no zombie apocalypse with old EMP school carry handle on the old, side. Old school carry handle. Come on, come on. Yeah. I got all this, all these guns and ammo and no zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Uh, yeah. Right? Gosh yeah. dang it! Damn it! There are <laughs> there are now as we talked about earlier that no one thought that was important. There are zombie deer and moose and elk. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what I mean, happens I, if you eat that meat. You probably will oh, die no, immediately. No, you don't want to eat the wasting. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, you don't I mean, want to get wanna, any of that wasting disease. Yeah, I want to waste a zombie with a with a chameleon barrel from Faxon. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Yeah, Faxon's I mean, got some was, cool barrels. Right. I mean, I'm just waiting to I'm just waiting to waste a zombie with this thing. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Faxon has some badass barrels. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Um, Let's see. We've got another question for Adam. How long has Adam been shooting competitively? How did he get started? How much training is involved? Is it expensive, et cetera, et cetera? It's, uh, it's definitely expensive. I'm not going to kid you on that one. If you try to shoot the bigger stuff, um, I started out with literally a A2 carry handle AR-15, a Glock 19, and a pump action uh, Mossberg. And I literally had like three rounds in it. And I had to reload after three rounds and it was a giant pain in the butt. Um, I've been shooting now for about four or five years, give or take competitively and taking it serious. Um, the big thing I would say is find your local match and start there because you're going to learn a ton. It's, it's the one thing that most part of these local places, everyone will give you a shirt off their back. I mean, I bring at least three extra guns. And if someone says they need it, I hand them out. Um, Alex and Ryan who makes holsters. They were kind enough to give me holsters. So I, I loan out holsters. I loan out gear. Um, there's optics on everything that I loan out. Uh, the, the shooting community will, for the most part, give you a shirt off their back just to let you experience, you know, whatever you're trying to get into. Um, and it, you can do it on the cheap. I mean, the first time I did it, all I had to do was buy ammo and pay a $20 entry fee. And I did that for probably a year, year and a half. And then I started trying the bigger stuff. Then you got to travel. Um, I think I'm traveling to five or six different matches this year from Ohio down to Virginia. Uh, and as far away as Utah, um, and it's a great community. I mean, I've, I've learned more from some of these people than I could ever imagine. Uh, Josh Tarrant, who's a, who's a big competitive shooter. He's local. Um, Josh or, uh, Jay, Jay Carrillo, uh, some other guys. I mean, they, they will sit there and tell you the secret to their success. They don't try to hide it and go, you know, you can't know because you might compete with me. They're like, they'll even tell you like, Hey, your stage plan sucks. Why don't you look here? I'll show you how to do it. And it'll make you, you know, 10 seconds faster. These guys don't even care. I mean, they're competing for you know thousands of dollars, and they're willing to tell you exactly how to beat them. So it's insane to do all that. And I've made most of my best relationships right now come from the shooting community. Um, Hollow Sun literally reached out to him one day and said, "Hey, do you guys uh, want to get in competitive shooting?" I'm like, oh yeah. They invited me to Shot Show like within like twelve months, and uh, you know IWI got in with them, and uh, now it's been four or five years, and uh, the, the shooting community is just it's awesome. The competitive shooting side is just fantastic. And I would okay. advise anyone that can get into it because if nothing else, you're becoming a better shot. Um, you're, you're just going to. You're, instead of shooting that 100 rounds a year, you're going to shoot 1,000 rounds a year probably your first year. You're going to shoot 5,000 after that. And you're, just, you're going you're gonna to see your skill level just exponentially go up. And if nothing else, if you're into self-defense, you're going to be that much better at self-defense because you're that much better accuracy-wise. And sure, it's artificial stress. But it's still artificial stress that you're like, I got 20 people watching me. I'm trying to do good. My wife's looking at me. You know, it's all that stress adds up and you start getting better and better. You can handle stress more and more. Okay. Do you think that uh, shooting competitively is going to translate into making you John Wick? Um, <laughs> I will say it lends part of it to it because 
Um, just like defensive shooting, whether whoever you train with, they induce artificial stress and they try to make you do things you're not used to or reload when, you, when, you, when you're not expecting it. The same thing goes with, with uh, competitive shooting. You start to learn how to reload incredibly fast. You can shoot much faster. Um, you get good at moving and shooting. Um, I can't guarantee, because I don't think I'll ever be John Wick, but uh, I've definitely seen some dudes now who after, after 10 years of shooting competitively, I mean, it's, they could be a real life John Wick. They're just that fast and that good. Um, and they don't, most of them don't do anything defensively. It's just competitively, but they do so much practice that they're just insanely fast and insanely accurate. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, um, doing some kind of practice or training is better than nothing. And I think obviously guys who do competitive shooting, um, are better than people who aren't out there doing anything or not doing very much training and stuff like that. And then obviously it's completely different for that person who is training all the time and they're training defensively. Now, of course, John Wick, I'm, I was like joking around because John Wick is a yeah, movie that's <laughs> choreographed. <laughs> that's not how stuff happens <laughs> in the real world. But yeah, it's it, it's good to get out there and do something. You know, yeah, it's, it's, good, it's I, a good exercise. It is. And it's one of those things like, you know, I, I, I've gotten to know Steve Fisher and, and some of the people from Hollow Sun, and you get to you see these guys who, who they train. That's what they do. And they're incredibly fast and incredibly accurate. Um, Tom Alabrando from IWI, crazy wealth of knowledge. It's, it's kind of unbelievable. So is Rebecca McCoy and Jeremy Gresham. And they practice a lot. And the one thing that most of us, most of us can do, your normal person, is we don't have access to a range where on every Tuesday I can go out and do running and shooting or, you know, shoot more than a couple rounds a second in indoor range. And you got these competitions, as long as you're safe, you can screw around. You don't have to, you know, really compete. And you see guys that go out there. We see cops out there in their full cop rig. And it's it's great because most of them, a lot of the cops that we shoot with are usually terrible shots um, because they don't shoot. You know, they shoot their 50, 60 rounds a year in Ohio, and that's all they need to, to qualify. Yeah, so they go out terrible. there and they're said, right. And then they go out to competitively shoot and they go, holy crap, I'm going to shoot 1,000 rounds. Even if I shoot just a couple matches, I'm going to shoot 1,000 rounds. I'm going to do moving and shooting. I'm going to do reloads when I don't expect them. I'm going to shoot from unorthodox positions. It all just adds up and builds up. Uh, but there's still a huge proponent from the self-defense side where if you're doing that, you still need to take those self-defense classes because not all of it correlates. And I still find that when I go to IWI classes, there's stuff where I'm like, I just potatoed that because I did it, you know, I tried to game it. And defensive situations, you, you can't always game it. You know, there's, there's certain things that are going to come up that you're not going to have pre-described uh, solutions for. Yeah. Mike um, Bryant says IDPA is a good competition sport for defense training. Um you know, uh, and then Jake Delahome says Keanu Reeves actually trains before his Wick movies. Yeah, he he trains with uh, Terran, Terran Tactical. Butler. Yeah, Terran yep. Tactical. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of different things that, you know, I think, like I said, I think doing something helps you. One of the things you have to realize, especially for guys uh, on, you know, on your level, um, those are completely different guns from what you're going to have in a, in a defense situation, right? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a whole bunch of other things that go into it. Like when we were talking to Tig, uh, John Tigan, when we were talking to him about that and what happened in Benghazi, he wasn't shooting that fast. You know, I, uh, I remember having that conversation with him and I've seen him say it in other places that he wasn't necessarily shooting fast. So that's not, I think you're going to, you have to have probably a different mindset for a defense situation. You're not going to like, you know, you don't want to empty <laughs> Uh, your magazine and all that kind of stuff like you would do if you're shooting competitively and you're thinking about time and all of that kind of stuff. But I think it is something, at least your brain is processing it. Well, and, and the, the thing I always tell people is, you know, with competition shooting, it lends a lot of stuff to it. But the one thing you can't do is in competitive shooting, generally two rounds on a target nullifies the target. So it's two rounds, move on, two rounds, move on. And with that defensive shooting, you know, like you saw, probably like in Benghazi, did, two rounds didn't always do the job, you know, and, and with stress, with mortars coming in, now you're now think about your average self-defense situation. So one I think about is uh, my wife and I were home one night. It was crazy late at night and somebody tried to kick in our door and we live out in the middle of like farm community where like everybody's got a gun. So it's not something very common. And I tell you what, man, my stress level was so high. It was insane. I did stuff I probably shouldn't have done. Uh, thank God I didn't have to actually shoot anything. But, you know, you, your, your mind goes to a thousand miles a minute. And I will say, I think the competitive shooting helped at least calm some of those nerves down. Mm -hmm. But I've known guys who've gotten in defensive shootings. And the one thing they tell you is the minute your wife's in danger or your kids are in danger, you rethink everything. You know, it's like 
you know, if I can get my kids and wife out, I'm not even going to engage this person versus if I'm alone or, you know, it's, it's that mentality of like, oh, I can take out anybody. Not really. Um, yeah. So it's it, it's a give and take on that as to no one knows what their self situation is going to be. Is it going to be a brick wall behind them and you can empty 30 rounds and nobody cares? Or is it going to be like the one they just had uh, in the news here in Ohio where five guys tried to break into a house? Mm hmm. Five guys is a different story. If I've only got my Glock 34, um, which is what I carry, but if I got a Glock 34, I only have 17 rounds. Five guys is a lot of dudes. Even if it takes, you know, the three rounds on average per guy, that's still 15 rounds if I hit every single person with every single round and it drops them. Um, you know, my, my self-defense gun's at 300 blackout and it's mostly stock other than uh, the suppressor and the optic. Um but would I mind taking any of these guns into a uh, self-defense scenario? No. I mean, it'd be fantastic because I'm probably going to have a 60-round drum and a suppressor and a great trigger. <laughs> <laughs> so I could empty some rounds. Yeah, you always the reality rolling. is Yeah, yeah. Right, I, the reality is I'll probably have this guy. I mean, this 90% of what's going to happen, this will be what I have. So, you know, this is what I'm going to deal with. I'm going to deal with my Red Dot and my X300 flashlight and my Glock 34. So... You know what is that? What, what you is that? What you carry when you're out? Yeah, I carry a Glock 34. Um, I carried a Glock 19 for a long time, and I found that I could carry a Glock 34 just as well. Um, I'm sure somebody's gonna make a joke about uh, needing room down in their pants, but uh, you know, it it works, <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it it works well. Um, and I I like that I have a, a full grip. I've got uh, a full capacity magazine, at least what I do a full capacity magazine, and. You know, I, I can shoot this relatively quickly and, and still get a lot of shots, most of the shots on target. Yeah. Okay. Um, Walter, I don't know if you had something to add there. No, I'm just, I, I'm just listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see there's a um, there's some conversation going on about the uh, about the polymer guns. I think that uh, Tyvin is saying that that's just the 80s and the 90s polymer that he was talking about, not the current okay. stuff. Um, so, but you know, I'm just, I'm just teasing Tyvin. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, and then someone I saw said, said that they put like aluminum foil. I think okay, they were Dan, joking. Yes. Yeah. Dan hates you said, I start, I started putting aluminum foil on all my Glocks <laughs> to protect it. From, you're going to need more than that to protect it from an EMP, by the way. <laughs> Next time you have me on, I'm just gonna have like every gun wrapped in tin foil. I'm gonna invest like a hundred bucks in tin foil and wrap everything. <laughs> YNH says lots of Ohioans are here tonight. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Yeah. Shout out to Ohio in the hizzy. Ohio's <laughs> yeah, Ohio's out there. Uh Walter, did you have any guns that you wanted? To, uh Dan hates you said aluminum foil holsters. Well, yeah. I'll get on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of shot the wad early on, you know, with the guns, you know, it's like, yeah. boom. <laughs> okay. Well, I will show you guys. I just, uh, I'm rendering it right now. The video that we did on the black widow from uh, North American arms. So the black widows up till now have not actually been black. So this is a black PVD that's new for uh, 2019. And uh, we did a video of that. So that should be coming out soon. Um, those so are how many those rounds in what caliber? This is 22 Magnum and uh, five rounds. And those are spent shell casings in there for anyone who's who's uh, interested in that spent shell casings in there, just so that we can mess around with it. If you look at the front, see I'm muzzling you, there's nothing sticking out there. So um, yeah, so that video, that's coming up pretty soon. The video, Lola says that she turned on the video tonight. If you guys go over to the regular Hank Strange channel, the video for the AM2 is out there. So that's from uh, Diamondback Firearms, I love AM2. It. And that's raw, unedited. I'm looking for my magazine. I had another magazine for this AM2 here. You know you're missing something in that video. What What am I missing? You got to have somebody loading mags for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you want to see the raw, unedited thing, I can't have – Lola can't load the mags and run the camera at the same time, Walter. We oh, well. we. We All can do I'm that when is, you're there. When you're there, yeah, right? I, yeah. I'm the I'm the Vietnamese woman loading the mags. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and the first thing Walt's gonna say, oh, I'm not loading the mags for you. <laughs> you so, so there he goes. It looks like a 19x with a long ass 15. 15 you know what that long. means? You know, to take that long ass thing there and add one of these on it. Oh, boom! <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does have it does have that butt plug thing, kind oh. of like a Glock. There's a lot of Glock in here. For example, the sights. 
Check it yeah. out. Those are Glock sights in there. It takes down like a Glock. has the same kind of takedown. So anyway, that video is up right now. I encourage everyone to go over there. Even if you're watching right now, you can open, open up another window, and then you could go look at the one-take video that we did with that. There's no edits or anything like that in there. It's our raw take on it. Walter, you saw it. Here, I'll throw up yep. a link to it for the folks yep. out there. At least go take a look and uh, you know, like the video and all that kind of stuff. Show some support. I, I, think the, uh, I think the pistol did all right myself. Yeah, it was okay. There was there were a couple of issues in the beginning, um, and then it kind of those mostly went away. So we'll see. Yeah. When when you uh, when you're over there, we'll we'll go through it, man. We'll make. Yeah, we'll. I'll yeah. bring some floor sweepings to try in it too. Yeah, we'll put lots of different <laughs> rounds. I'll have you loading up since you volunteered. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't complain this time. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what happens is, I always load a couple mags, and they think I'm going to load all the mags for them, and they just <laughs> blast away. You know, it's like, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> you have the best hands, Walter. You have magazine loading hands. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Go. You're going to have to show it again. No one saw that. So, if anyone's listening to this on audio, Walter is right now showing his big meat hooks. They are ginormous. Quack, 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 quack. Gigantic, quack. gigantic hands. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, live long and prosper, dumbass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Walter, look, you want to show some hand tricks? Watch. Can you uh, do can you do that with both hands? Like hang that? Hang on a second. Let's see. Can you do it with both what, hands? What, what, okay. What? Now can you do this? Can you switch it back hang and on, forward? Let me think about it a second. Switch here. it back and forward, both uh, hands. Uh, I had to think about like, it. Oh yeah. What? Well, yeah. yeah. What kind of what kind of black magic is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's a magic trick. Anyway, I've been doing that since I was a little kid. I've been doing this, like practicing with both my hands. That's so, like, I could, so I can do it. It's is that the, yeah. is that the, the, the that's the, that's the gang symbols from your, uh, from, your no. from your people, no, your culture, your culture. From, so the live, it's live long and prosper. It's live long and prosper. And then, and so, then this one was in some other sci-fi thing. Okay, this okay. one I can't. Okay, I, can't I know what sci-fi. I know it's part of your culture. So someone I mean, knows. I'll, I'll leave it now. alone. Yeah. Okay, you're not gonna <laughs> let go of the culture thing, obviously. You started the culture. Yeah. Yeah. You doing it, doing it for the culture. <laughs> doing it for the culture. Boom! There's your culture right there. Um. <laughs> I got you. Uh, uh, okay, Rondell Stewart says try moving just your middle two fingers. Okay, middle two fingers. Okay, right like. there, like that, because they're kind of like connected, on the same. Yeah. Okay. Look, Adam is looking at us with his arms like, crossed. What like, the? What did I, I get these guys are it. idiots. I'm I'm like, what? I'm like these, these, these Balkan. I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Na, na, nanu, nanu. Who was it? Who was it that did this one though? This one is from who did this one? Some one of the sci-fi shows did this one wow. because I've been doing uh, that since uh, I was a kid. Someone just called me a dork. I, I was told all we have to practice is, is uh, jazz hands. That's all I was told to practice. That's all I practice. The jazz hands. Okay. All right. <laughs> Dorkman. Uh, Dan hates you. Says, "Spin one finger around your ear and spin the other finger in the opposite direction around the other ear." Not gonna uh, try it. Not gonna. Nope, okay, nope. there's a limit. <laughs> there's a limit. Uh, Rondell Stewart says, <laughs> it's "In Total Recall." That's true. That was the thing in Total Recall. Oh, okay. I was trying to think of that name of that, but I couldn't. But I think it was in other stuff. It wasn't. I've been doing that way before uh, Total Recall. So, um, and Hill Climb Ohio JB says, "Laugh out loud." We're all trying it. <laughs> uh brian quick says hank throwing up gang signs and rolling in a six four and big cliff said spock so spock was this one yeah yeah spock was this yep. long and prosper yeah but this one is someone someone else i don't know doctor who i don't know uh, i don't know who the hell was doing this one so no man uh, i know total, it wasn't, wasn't total recall was one with the chick with the three boobs right yes that yeah, you remember Schwarzenegger, yeah yeah, yeah that, I remember that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one you remember. Very good. Very good. Okay, let me see. Were there any other uh Walt, you said you didn't have any uh guns? Well, I show, like right? I said, um people have been asking about the uh the MP the as people call it the or, or as Xena calls it reverse stretch, I call it full size MP five. We are cutting this part right here in the shop right now. So we'll have these pretty soon, I hope. So Okay, so all the stocks that you guys said you were going to be making after you get back from SHOT Show, those are all getting... Well, yeah, the next one after this is finished, we'll start working on the Streetbug. 
Okay. People are bugging the crap out of me about the street bugs. Yeah, so. and I'm throwing up some news that we are going to talk about here in a second. But you know what? Since Adam, since we have you here, did you hear the yeah. news about Shot Show that some guys stole 65 guns from the show? Yeah, and suppressors too. I heard, or at least yeah. a suppressor. Yeah. They yeah, caught him though. But that's. Yeah. I mean, that's it's just. I mean, what was it last year or two years ago? The dude walked off with the scope. I think three years ago, somebody took the Lantac BCG that was the prototype, the original one. Mm-hmm. It's, there's always people trying to walk off with stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Always happens. But 65 yeah, items. The, they stole 65 I, items, got arrested by the ATF and the FBI, and it got released on their own recognizance. I I mean, you just wonder. I mean, it's it's like they were just talking about the uh, the guy who did that, that recent shooting that shouldn't have had a firearm and he still packed and passed an NFA background check. Or, I mean, twice. sorry, a background check. Mm-hmm. Twice, yeah. And it's like, how are all these guys getting away with this? And then, and then you find out they get released with nothing. And it's like, well, no wonder. If there's no penalty, why not try it? I mean, yeah. I mean, these are yeah. still 65 guns. I feel like if I stole a paper clip, I'm going to go to prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This yeah, dude gets 65 guns. Like, like, oh, you're, you're fine. Yeah. You're not a flight risk or a, a danger yeah. to anybody. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Jafari H wants to know if there's a discount code. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I will. I'll, I'll get you one, and then we'll, uh, we'll post up on your, on your channel. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe we'll yeah. get we'll get one for you guys going on here. Um, and then hold on. There was a comment. I want. Ray Bazzolo has a thing for us to see who can do this. He says, "Pull your lower lip over your head." <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, Adam. Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Whoever can do that, you, 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 you're the man. You're the man. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, okay. So let's get let's get to this um, article that I threw up there. Where's that, it at? That's in the Truth About Guns, and I just put it in there. The headline is Americans name the top problems facing the country. Gun control advocates are the hardest hit. So if you only get your news from the mainstream media, you'd be forgiven for thinking that America is a barren, violent hellscape of lawlessness and mayhem, a dystopia of red-hatted gun owners assaulting pedestrians on the streets and children practicing duck and cover drills (laughs) due to the daily massacres and errant gunfire that pockmarks the walls of their schoolhouses. Yeah. We're living in a scene from The Purge brought to life. Who wrote this? Oh, Dan Zimmerman, of course. <laughs> so he goes through all these things that uh, different politicians say are the problems. They're all saying it's guns, 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 guns. So there's only one problem with all of that. The American people don't agree with them at all. In fact, according to a new Gallup poll of the biggest problems facing the United States, gun violence doesn't even merit a mention. Immigration. Look at that one. Yeah. The, okay. So oh. the top ones, the top ones are uh, with 35%, the government poor leadership. What? A- immigration has the biggest number besides that. Yeah. Immigration is 19%. Healthcare, 6%. Race uh, relations and racism, 5%. Unifying the country, 4%. Poverty, hunger, homelessness, four oh, that, yeah, percent. Yeah, environment, yeah. Uh, pollution, three percent. Ethics, morals, religious, family decline. That's three percent. Federal budget deficit, federal debt, three percent. Economy in general, three percent. Unemployment, jobs, three percent. Lack of respect for each other, two percent. Education, two percent. There you go. What so, you, how, so how think? how is the deficit only three percent? Because most people don't give a crap. Tell, tell me that one. Because <laughs> people can't. People can't see the deficit. I, I mean, I don't, you I don't, agree. You I don't think they can. It, if somebody says a trillion dollars, they, they have no concept of what a trillion right. dollars is. Ask an yeah. Iranian, they'll tell you what uh, 150 billion looks like, <laughs> cash. Um, but they have no concept on of, of the volume or the space or the how, money, how much money that is. I mean, it, it blows my mind that, I mean, and I guess it's hard to comprehend a trillion dollars, and most of us don't even know what a million dollars looks like. But it's one of those things where it's like you're twenty two trillion dollars in debt. And it's like it's the very end of the list of what we're concerned about. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's how it goes. I mean, if we go back to that, the top the top two biggest things by far are government and poor leadership. I agree with that. We got horrible, mm-hmm. you know, poor leadership within the government. And, and then immigration is a big thing. Immigration yeah. Red Bear, Red Bear a tactical. Red Bear says build a wall, deport them all. Yep. 
<laughs> That's what he says right there. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. So which one of those do you guys think government poor leadership is more important than immigration or um, do, you, do you do you agree with where it is here? Like government being horrible is number one and then immigration is number two and healthcare so, is number three, but distantly. Yeah. Healthcare. So, so the one thing I see is, is uh, when you look at a company or when you look at a business or whatever, if you have poor leadership, that same respect or, or disrespect thing funnels down. I think that's why I think that's why you see so many families who don't have a budget or below their budget. Is when you see the federal government doing it every single day and nobody cares, they tend to do it. Um, I think health insurance. I mean, unfortunately, that's that's a huge one right now. I mean, I I know people that are my age that they can't find a full time job with health insurance, and immigration. That's that's what needs to be fixed now. I mean, you see all these reports. These guys going up to the the, the border. And it's like a log across a road. <laughs> That's the border fence. It's a log. So yeah. Yeah. I think I mean, Democrats those are big made ones. that it made that into the Democrats and media have made this into an issue. And that's why America is seeing it as an issue. They're trying to tell America how to see it, but Americans see it as no, this is a problem. You know? Right. right. Um, and you can't do that when you or you can't fake people into believing something, right? If you Sorry. highlight it, people are gonna look at it and they're gonna formulate their own opinions on it. It would have been easier for them to just give him the seven, eight billion, whatever Trump wanted, let something be done. They basically done didn't, with it. Yeah, they didn't want to give him a win, but they brought attention to that. And I think that's the reason why it's ranking there. And it's also the reason why people are looking at, at government, right? Because there's shutdowns and all, all of right. this. And most people are like, what get, the hell? Get on to Fox News today and look at all the, the drugs that were that that they got down in Texas. They didn't. Yeah. The, the tooth fairy didn't wiggle her nose, and those didn't appear in Texas. They came across the border. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and what is that? Okay, all these people are dying because of fentanyl and all this other stuff that's coming across the border. <laughs> so, yeah, yes, and, Professor, I mean, so yes, many. Professor <laughs> well, but it, it's all it's no. it all makes sense, you know. I mean, you know, and it, and six billion dollars, seven billion dollars. So what? Count up the cost of all the health care and the and this and that and the other. It's a pittance. So. Mm -hmm. Dan hates you. Says he keeps calling you, but you won't answer, Walter. <laughs> Walter. What's he calling me? <laughs> oh, call me on the phone. Call me on the. Uh, yeah, he's uh, just uh, at the shop. To be honest with you, at the shop, I don't. Is there, God, yeah, is there is it? there an emergency going on here? I, no, it's 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 not it's not that something. Yeah. Um, some okay. a friend of mine wants me to order a bunch of those uh, flamethrowers. Um, flame you know, ones you, oh, yeah, flamethrowers. Yeah, and then we're gonna sell them, I guess. But I, I, okay. haven't, I have, I have I, flamethrowers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, brought, <laughs> yeah. you piqued my interest. You yeah. Had me, you had me at flames. <laughs> yeah. Um, at the shop, I don't normally answer the phone because if you're gonna ask me about an order, I don't have that shit in front of me, so I can't tell you. If you're going to ask me about shipping something or ordering something, I'm not the person taking the order. So if I answer the phone, I just got to go, unless you got a question to answer. Yeah, you don't even take my text. I text you all day. Well, I guess because half the time I don't have this in my pocket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's That's noisy the in the shop. America. People you know, not, you know, your phone needs to be pasted to your ear. No, I'm yeah. just going to say Come that. on, EMP, please. <laughs> please, EMP, please. Yeah. Um, then you then you get the old dial up phone up and watch these uh watch these kids try to you ever watch these kids try to figure out how to use a dial phone? Please, a, rotary, EMP, a, a please. rotary phone, a rotary phone. <laughs> <laughs> they look at they they start they start talking to it and like, why, why, why? Yeah, back in the olden days we had these things called telephones. Yeah, even the, the ones with the push part. buttons. I'd like to watch one of them yeah. one more with a push button. I mean, yeah. They were hardwired. You can only you can only do one thing. It wait, rings. Wait. You answer. It took a hundred years. It, we had a hundred years of progress in this country to get super great phone service, right? And then what do we do? We do this thing, oh, phones. and yeah. the phone service nine times out of ten, a lot of times, <laughs> sucks so bad. Uh, you know. Oh yeah. Oh well. Yeah, cell phones. That yeah. Look, the the cell phones are so Lola, Lola, Lola and I go in diff separate directions when we're leaving the house in the morning. She goes to work. I come here. So when we go back, when we leave here at night, we got to shut this place. What is why is Walter showing us his t-shirt? Somebody's asking me in the chat. What's on my shirt? It why says, you always bring me junk? Okay, if anybody watch uh, Fast and Loud, and um, you know uh, the Grease Monkey, uh, Gas Gas Monkey Garage. 
Oh, okay. The okay, uh, lady, yes. the lady that does the upholstery a lot of times. Yes, yes. The, the Asian lady, lady. That's her. Asian. That's her thing. Why you always bring me junk? You, know, you gas. You ass monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like her. I like her. So yeah. Oh, okay. So you got that T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for interrupting my story, Walter. I appreciate that. Okay. Continue on, uh, sir. You? No, I forgot what I was talking you about. You got five there. minutes. Everybody wants to know about the flamethrowers. <laughs> um, uh, Simpson Row Larry says, "Don't be a flamed Hank." Uh. Like JB uh, Hill Climb says, flamethrowers. I watched Joe Rogan interview with Elon Musk about him producing some. Are those oh, that's the ones a, that's being a, referred that's to? A, that's a that's a pussy flamethrower. That's a lighter. That that's is a, a lighter. Yeah, yeah. Check out the video with American Gun Chick behind my shop using the flamethrower, and um, that's what that's the flamethrower. So yeah. Oh, American Gun Chick behind the shop with the flamethrower. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Sounds um, like the start to a weird. I like, movie. yeah, I like how I wasn't invited to that one, but okay. you were invited, Biatch. <laughs> 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 you're just two hours away. That's how you. Uh, so, what, so wait, hold on a second. What kind of flamethrowers are you getting here? You know, the ones you pour the gas in, and they got, you know. Okay, I called dibs. What are the ones these that are commercially things? available? Yeah. Okay. What? Uh, what? 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 Where? When? How? When? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep you informed. I got to make Are these a phone old call. school flamethrowers or the newer, the newer. Like school? they had out Aries. Okay. The actual strap it to your back. Well, not the back ones that you can get the ones with the tank for your back, but these are just ones where it's all, you know, hold it in your hand and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. But it's just real gasoline and diesel and you know. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. Adam is like, uh, <laughs> what the, my, 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 in my head, I'm sitting there going, we all need to get together, get in the back of a truck, <laughs> just drive down the road with just plain doors, just roaring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, pretty, burn. they're pretty impressive at night, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. That's I, I'm like, where do, where do we sign up now? Where are we meeting at again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Everyone's saying, yeah, Elon Musk thing is not a flamethrower. No, which that's is a it. that's a freaking lighter. That's yeah, it's a glorified is. barbecue lighter, basically. Yeah, yeah these. That uh, that's the one thing that surprises me about Joe Rogan. I watched Joe Rogan, but Elon Musk came on and he just got lost his shit. You know, first of all, he was wearing a pink silk shirt. <laughs> that's a signal. <laughs> That's the signal. Joe Rogan came on, and then he uh, when uh, Elon Musk came on his show, and then he sees him doing this flamethrower thing. He's like, "Oh my God, you're a genius! You're a genius! No, no one ever thought of this." <laughs> tell, <laughs> so, <laughs> tell those Japanese on Iwo Jima about flamethrower. Yeah, they don't tell you. That oh yeah, so. the Germans had flamethrowers too, by the way. So. Yeah, um, I like Joe Rogan, but certain people come on the show and he just loses it. He he goes all he goes all. Starts bobbing on their knob or something. Is that? What yeah, he he's got no. That? Yeah, no perspective. No <laughs> yeah. perspective. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's though it's nice to see a guy at his level that kind of knows everybody. He's got those like man crushes where he's like, like you're the guy who I look up to. So it's kind of interesting to see when he does like freak out when somebody like, you know Musk comes on. Oh, yeah. If I remember correctly, Rogan's a big fan of the Tesla. So yes, he is. I think he bought he bought the new I'm one. I'm not he worthy. Actually, I'm not he, worthy. He told <laughs> Elon Musk, this is what he said. A car guy. This is what amazed me. Joe Rogan, certified car guy. He's got some badass cars, nice Porsches and stuff like that. He goes, Elon Musk, you tell me. You tell me what what um what Tesla I get. You just tell me. I buy it. That's what he said. Yep. Yeah. Certified we, car guy. We just guy. had one out. We have one out here in uh in Ohio, and one of the guys was driving it. He's like the torque because the torque's instantaneous. He's like, it's insane how fast you can do when you hammer that thing down. Um, there's no, yeah. there's no take up to it. It's just instantaneous. Right. Oh yeah, so, I mean, it's electricity. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, cool stuff. Just, yeah. You know, it's different. Very different. Yeah. No, I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking no. it. But you know, I'm just, I'm not ready to go for one yet. They haven't made one that I really like yet. Two each. Well, they need, you know. Yeah, I mean, they, they need to work the quirks out. Until then, I'll stick with my pickup. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, Hank has offered me like three or four times. You want to drive the R8? You want to drive the R8? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Well, what, you're not, isn't not impressive. Well, no, it's not that. I just, you know, I'm. I, I, uh -huh. I will eventually. Yeah. When, when well, the time is he, right. He's still he's still sour about the flamethrower, man. That's all <laughs> yeah. it is. I'll trade you my R8 for flamethrower. <laughs> Done. 
<laughs> I can arrange that tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> yeah, until you see the bill. When you see the bill, you'll be like, oh. well, I ain't taking no bill. We yeah, ain't well, talking about bill. Well, if, you, if you give me the flamethrower and you take it, you even, pay the bill. Even Steven, baby. Even Steven. <laughs> uh, uh, that's not how it works. <laughs> no, I don't think how. so. Yeah. I don't own anything on any car, so I'm not looking to do that right now. So. Yeah. Polo's going to black bag somebody in a second with that about the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to take one last question. Armament and Axis wants to know what part of Ohio you're in, Adam, if you care to disclose that. Yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in northeast Ohio by the uh, by the lake. It's actually uh, Geneva, Asheville County. Um, I'm, I'm two minutes from the lake, and uh, I go down to Cincinnati to see facts on firearms and shooting sites. So if, if they're somewhere in Ohio, it's gonna let me know. I'll stop down and have lunch with them or something. Right, and you don't, despite your shirt, you don't work for Faxon. I do not. I just uh, paid. Uh, Kurt paid me a hundred dollars for this shirt, so I mean, hundred bucks, hundred bucks. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, take the money. Take it. <laughs> I didn't even get anything yeah. for this. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, take it. Awesome. Okay, listen, man, the time has gone by really quick, so I think I, you know, I think this was fun. We have to get you to come back on, um, especially when you yeah. guys have cool new stuff that's out. Or if you just want to hang with us, man. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that was if you awesome. figure out how to do yeah, this, sure. if you figure out how to do this, you know, I mean, you know, then, uh, yeah, you got to work on that. You gotta, yeah, you got to work on that. So <laughs> Check nah. out Walter's. Walter's working on it. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up here. Walter, what, what do you, where do you want the people out there to follow you? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, do some Twittering, too. Um, that's pretty much it for me. Um uh, this weekend, Military Vehicle Rally, Mount Dora, Renegers. I'm getting yes, ready for Joe. that. Yeah, I'll be there Saturday. Get there Saturday. I'll be there Saturday, Sunday. I'll be there Friday, actually, too. So um, Thursday, too, actually. Uh, setting up the okay. camp. But anyways, if you're, if, you get, if somebody's in the area and they want to stop by, see tanks and Jeeps and trucks, stop yeah. by. And tomorrow, Lola, who is it we have? We've got we've got uh, the beef. It's what's for dinner. Um, uh, coming on tomorrow from uh, Black Hill. Uh, Bear Creek Cattle Company. Be Bear Creek Arsenal, Lola says. Not Arsenal, Bear Creek yeah, Cattle Company. Yeah, I don't know why she's saying Arsenal. Yeah, Bear Creek Cattle Company. Yeah, the state guy. So, yeah, Will, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Will's coming on tomorrow. We're gonna be talking meat, yeah, straight if meat. You, if you, <coughs> oh, straight meat. No, no straight <laughs> meat. Okay. We're gonna be talking meat. It's what the data. You get your questions ready for about the about the moo the moo meat. Moo. Yes, and how to cook it with your machine gun. <laughs> Because he is a gun guy, so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun tomorrow. Okay, Adam, tell us out there like uh, how people can get in touch with you. They want to do stuff, or if they want to follow you on social media before we get out. Yeah, you guys can uh, hit me up on just the personal Facebook, Adam Litke, or uh, the the shooting one is Adam Litke dash. Uh, it's L I T K E dash competitive shooter, or on Instagram, it's Adam underscore S A S A. I am uh, I am not tweeting along with Walter, so you cannot find me on the uh, oh. Twitter uh right i know he's, he's depressed now um <laughs> and then uh you guys can find me at uh stuff like shot show nra show girl in a gun i'll be there with iwi or hollis on one of them, one of them depending on which where it's at um and then a lot of the bigger matches noveski uh october fest october fest with kalishnikovs i'll be there um and then uh, i'll try to get you guys hooked up with a discount code uh, i have a website i sell the, the optics through Shield and Sword Academy, uh, dot com, and we'll try to get a discount code that we can get everybody. We'll do like a group buy or something like that and try to try to get some deals going. All right. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll supply you guys with that. Walter, did yeah, you have a Instagram, question? Instagram again? Adam underscore S A S A. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Clint Boom. Sanders says, wasn't Bear Creek the one ice rated for illegal workers? No, we're talking about. <laughs> Yes, Bear Creek Arsenal was. Yes, yeah. they had ice to come in there, but this is Bear Creek Cattle Company. Uh, yes, yeah. they yeah. they make cows. So unless they have cows that illegally came across the border, steak, that would be, steak, yeah. meat, steak. beef. I don't care if my if my steak tastes good. I don't care if it came across the border. To be honest with you, but I yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> it just gets in my stomach. Goes in my belly. <laughs> Get in my belly. Yeah. So we're going to do that. But lots of thanks to Adam Litke from yep, Hollow yep. Sun, yes. competitive shooter. Please follow him on social media just and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We'll get him to come back on because he's got some really cool guns. Thanks for bringing those, Adam, and sharing us with us. Very, very jelly right now. Very jelly. Very jelly. Yeah. I'm uh, the, I'm yeah. We want to see Wars. what other bullpups you have as well when you come back. 
Okay. What's that one? Like in the Star oh, Wars stuff, you know, Star yeah, Wars. Yeah. There you go. Look at that. Oh my God. That's everybody, everybody, oh look at that. Everybody keeps telling me I need to everybody kept telling me I need to do a blaster. Uh, a sterling blaster. So yeah. Oh heck yeah. Hells yeah. yeah. A Hells real yeah. one though that goes boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it. We're gonna see All you right. tomorrow. Beef it's what's for dinner tomorrow. We'll see you guys. We are out. Peace.